What's going on in here? Nothing. Looks like you guys are having some kind of a party. Awesome. Yeah, well I like to party too. You do? But I don't party like you guys. How do you party? I party like this here. Show us. <laughs> you know what this is? <laughs> this is the overdose. Sunday evening overdose 531 2015. Thank you very much for joining us this fine evening. How are you guys? I'm well. I'm not in the mood. You're not in the mood. I'm angry. What are you so angry about? I've been angry for like two days because I've been spending too much time on the fucking internet. Yeah. That's why. Because I got <laughs> roped into some dumb fucking argument and I just went on a tear. Two for two days of just engaging retards in no. comment sections. Yeah, I did. You can. It started with that gypsy thing. Yeah. Where now everybody's claiming gypsy is an offensive word. And and this entire group of people fucking just attacked this this local DIY venue, fucking underground venue that's not making money. They're opening their home for fucking bands and throwing concerts and shit. And they were called the Gypsy House, and everybody fucking went insane because one person pretended to be offended said this is a this is now an offensive word oh my god you're racist for having that name yeah 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 if if something isn't how i like it you have to change it for me i can't fucking go somewhere else get your primitive ideas out of here woman hater it was (laughs) and so i'm engaging with people who are basically like kind of i would assume like sort of tv head democrat people i guess you know what I mean? Have like, they ever even really? been to this venue that they're bitching about? That's, that's my question. Like, do you even go there, really? That's the thing. Do you really need to be affected by it? Are you really hurt by the word gypsy, you fucking cunts? Are you really hurt by the word gypsy? I am. I looked up, too. I was I was just so infuriated by this fucking argument, and I don't fucking know why, but I, it just really <laughs> got under my skin. You know why? I'll tell. All right, I do kind of know why. I'll tell you why. Because I can't fucking take it that people pretend to be offended just for the purpose of having some moral indignation because they don't have any other social value. They're not a fucking funny guy. They're not creative. They're not talented. People don't want to be around them based on what they do and say, so they find this other social role. I can cut somebody else down, and and that will be my thing. I can make someone else look like they're morally inferior, and then I'll get the energy from that from that experience, and people will look at me like I'm cool. Yeah, I'm the champion. I'll right. delude myself into thinking I'm defending the gypsies. And it's like, <laughs> just, but it's not even about that. It's not even as though any actual gypsies were angry. It's just this idea of I'm better than you. Yeah. Can't you, can't you see that? Have any gypsies <laughs> commented on the matter? No, not that I saw. Not a single gypsy has come forward. I don't know. So. I, there was like, well, they're probably too ashamed like to identify people. themselves that Don't way. talk off mic, please. Uh, so... Uh, that makes me mad too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> tried. Uh, I tried. All right. Look, I had. I've tried to lighten up. I really have. Yeah. Jimmy, if you want to talk, grab a mic. Next time. Just like tap me. Yeah, just tap somebody. I've tried to fucking anybody. lighten up. Yeah, anybody. I've tried to fucking lighten up about, like, the not really politics, but like the, my anti-government thing. Except for on the show, I do my thing. But just in day-to-day life, I've really tried to lighten up. As far as just fucking harassing people goes. Yeah. And I can't do it anymore. I'm going back to being a truther. That's what's happening now. I tried to give it up. <laughs> a I'm troll gonna, truther? Oh, dude, no. no. I'm you're... going back to, I'm going to listen to Alex Jones again, and I'm going to know everything that ever happens with everything, and just listen to all these factual shows, and I'm going to get in everyone's face and tell them why they're a fucking retard constantly, because I'm sick of it. I'm fucking pissed off again. <laughs> Vinny, you can't say the R word. I tried, dude. I, I tried not to be like the end is near guy anymore, but I can't. It's nigh. I can't do it. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> the end so is nigh. I'm going back to being a truther. 9/11 was an inside job. There's fluoride in the water. Why? Kennedy's Secret Service was pulled off his limo, and he is shot from two directions. The left-right political paradigm is a circle jerk of unawakened slobs. Income tax is unconstitutional. The elite class is overrun with corruption, occultism, child abuse. They've separated from the rest of the species. No common interest with us anymore. Liberty or death. 
1776! <laughs> <laughs> Live free or die. I'm back. Yay! No, seriously. You're, you're like a modern day Socrates, Vin. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I just... I, I just can't take the stupidity anymore. I'm going into these fucking forums where it's people arguing left right politics, and it's dry. It's I can't deal yeah. with it. You fucking idiots! Everybody's so fucking morally sure of themselves and superior of uh, to every. Oh, uh, you know, it's, how can you look at this back and forth bickering and not see what's going on? Mm-hmm. You really think your side is the one? I can't do it anymore. I just can't give it's, people a break anymore. It's one big party and none of us are invited. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's what people are spending all their time and energy going, oh, conservatives were so insensitive about Joe Biden's son dying. Fuck Joe Biden's son. Who uh, gives a shit? Right. Who cares? Joe Biden doesn't give a fuck about your son. Yeah. Fuck off. Oh. It doesn't matter who you are. You know, and it's like, they're they're like, it's, what do you think that Democrats don't do that when a Republican has a? Tra- it's like, dude, everyone's shitty to each other in right. your little party game. I can't. Yeah. Do- I just can't fucking take it it's anymore. The only reason it's there. John Kerry just broke his leg, and they like hired a helicopter and all this expensive stuff to fly him to a special hospital and all this shit. And they gave him another. Purple what the heart. fuck? Yeah, like I was like, <laughs> why doesn't he just go to the emergency room like every other normal American? Why does he get this? And I'm sure the taxpayers are flipping the bill for this expensive helicopter ride. He and gets this, the good doctor. Right? Because like what? Heart and he goes to a special hospital. Somewhere. Yeah, it's like, what? why does he get all this special treatment, though? I'm not saying he should get shitty treatment, but why should it be any better or worse than that of any other American citizen? You have to wait in line. Hmm. I mean, I was 16. <laughs> I broke my arm. I didn't have health insurance. Guess what? My arm was broken for a fucking year. Yeah. No helicopter came. There was not even any doctors involved. It was just your arms broken, and that shit never healed right. I uh, have a similar situation with my left foot. It's backwards. <laughs> yeah, it's backwards. <laughs> That's why your foot's on backwards. I'm a. Uh, I was today. I just got completely drawn back into this whole thing, and I'm just like commenting on. I'm just purposely now seeking out like either Democrat or Republican. <laughs> Facebook pages and shit and just commenting like you fucking retard brainless slobs just there's no purpose to any of this yeah. and I'll get a bunch of replies you know I don't know it's just a bunch of needless anger I I don't know but I'm I'm done fucking being I'm lightening up I'm gonna tell everyone exactly what I think again I've really given people a break because I wanted friends yeah but I don't get it. friends anyways <laughs> because fucking, I wanted you know, friends <laughs> yeah because I wanted to stop being the fucking it didn't work I wanted to stop being the guy people were nervous to talk to because I, I know that's who I am to a lot of people. I think it's know? really good to speak your mind. I just would I would caution you not to close your mind, but no. it's good that you're going to speak what you feel is truth. But you know, keep open. That's all I can say to that. Yeah, I guess so. But be nice to the gypsies. I was gi- I was giving yeah yeah watch that gypsy talk. <laughs> I was giving people, uh, <laughs> I was giving people breaks a lot just on like on their dumb mis- the misunderstanding of politics and stuff. That's the main mm-hmm. thing I'm talking about. I'm just going to start being a dick to everyone again. Fuck it. Who cares? Fuck yeah. you. I don't give a shit. Oh, you know what? It's time. You know what else? What? what? Talking what? on the pre-show what about what how flaky fucking people are. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Speaking of that, let's go to our guest for tonight. Hold on. Let's, uh, let me see if they're on the line here. Um, we got to get our music going for that, right? You know how we do the guest, Andrea. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I didn't have this shit pulled up. That's all right. Yeah, let's go to our guest for tonight. Who, who's our guest, Andrew? Uh Tonight we have uh, Christina Flake. Christina Flake. What is she about? Uh, we'll never know, because yeah. she wouldn't fucking tell us anything. Do her intro, for real. Try oh. to fucking do something here. Sorry, I, uh, I didn't know that we were doing that. Christina Rake is a demonologist. And she is also a member of the Paranormal Clergy Group, which specializes in extreme hauntings as well as possessions. Um, she's an author that she's working. Uh, she is not published yet, but she hopes to be published by the end of June of this month. Um, she is working to become a priest in the Old Catholic Church and uh, has, studied, has studied a great deal of science extensively in order to further prove her spiritual and paranormal 
ideas. Women in the Catholic Church, it was my understanding, cannot be priests. Okay, anyways, let's bring on Christina. Fuck you! Yeah, because she blew us off. Yeah. She's not here. There you go. Not Schedule here. her fucking... She's living in a fictional yeah, world no, where she I, can be I, a I priest. <laughs> Dude. Uh, Enjoy. She's, she's a deacon right now. Whatever she is. Yeah. Who gives a shit? The Catholic- we were going to give her a chance to come on here and fucking talk. I was yeah. going to be nice to her, even though we fucking hate Catholics. Yeah. Fuck off. I don't give a shit anymore. Yeah. Bitch. I don't want her. If she tries to reschedule, fuck her. No. Forget that's her. Fucking flaky people, dude. I wanted to learn about demons, like, really bad. Well, guess what? It would have been fun. It would have been fun to listen to, probably. But at the end of the day, it's just another fucking idiot who's trying to make money on something that's not real. Yeah. And weirdly intertwining it really high up in the Catholic Church, too. Yeah. That's another thing that's super weird about it. So I don't I'll give a fuck. I bet she's a real creep. Her and her fucking Zach Morris haircut. Fucking has. <laughs> Doing little videos like a politician with her fucking hand motions. I'm the deacon. Ha, ha, ha. The, uh, Please join me. me in some shithole in Texas so I can lie to you and take 40 bucks <laughs> from I, your pocket. I believe the Catholic Church is looking at changing a few things like their stance on homosexuality and whether or not women can become priests because their enrollment numbers are way down and they're like dissolving. See, that, and that's how, that's how dogma works. When you're running low on money, it's time to change yeah. the way you're doing it. Yep. Right. The value, your values follow the dollar. Yep. So anyways, yeah. So, so she might be a priest. She might not be crazy yeah. about that is what I'm saying. But uh, Becky from Silicon is trying to hook us up with all these guests. Brian Ward last week was on, the, the uh, dark crime expert. That was cool. Dark yeah. history. Dark history. Yeah. Whatever. We talked all about crime. But, that dude was yeah. cool. Uh, that was cool. Yeah. Everyone else has fucking flaked out, not followed through. She, she puts up a post. Hey, does anyone want to be on a podcast? 20 people. Yes, I will. I will. I will. Okay, here. Send an email to this address. How many? Brian Ward. One motherfucker. <laughs> one person. Good on you, Brian Ward. Yeah, one and, fucking and, person. And he was cool. I just want to say that one more time. That yeah, was really him. interesting. I hope he no, comes back. He was a great fucking guest. He was entertaining. He was, he was not fucking, how many of our guests come on and just want to talk all big about themselves and they're uninteresting and braggadocious and, and they just want to talk about how cool they are and, and how people don't understand what they do and stuff. And that guy was just fucking down to earth, talked about interesting shit that yeah. really made me think, why are we dealing with all these fucking paranormal people? Only a few of them have been cool with us. Yeah. Yeah. Becky's been cool. Amy, Joe Amy, has love. been fucking cool. Yeah. There's a few other paranormal investigators that have been cool, but for the most part, they've been uninteresting fucking kind of antisocial douchebags. Mm. And Ursula, man, like with a bunch of shit to prove. Right? Yeah. <laughs> what a bitch. <laughs> oh, Ursula. No. <laughs> no, she was actually fine too, yeah. honestly. We didn't we I didn't, kid Ursula. Yeah, we we, <laughs> we love you. We didn't have the best interview with her, but she wasn't I didn't you know, I didn't hate her. I liked her, you know, but she was at no the end Christina of it, but, Flake. Yeah, I mean right. the but how many people have we had on that just have nothing to say? <clears throat> really, at the you know what I mean? Why are yeah. we dealing with these fucking people? I don't know. Because they These thought they idiots. knew something about metaphysics, you know, but wow. But what they knew is they needed to know more than you, really. So yeah. they could yeah. fucking talk about They you needed know. to ch- talk to Chief Eaglefoot. And I'm, I'm just, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Becky's cool. Amy Joe's cool. I don't know. Maybe we'll meet some more cool people, but... Get I'm, cooler. I'm fucking, I'm, yeah, get cooler. I'm sick. Yeah. I'm sick of... I'm, uh, just having a regular person on who's, who's not a, like a psychic or some weird person made me realize, like, wow... That was refreshing. Like yeah. that, was, that guy just talked to us like a normal fucking person for a little while. That was kind of nice. Yeah. Um, not a run-on sentence, or not not just a ten-minute babble about how people misconstrue what they do. You know, that's mm-hmm. like, but that's not. I'm not just talking about uh, the last couple times that's happened. It's been since day one on this show. Yeah. You know, like that's the running theme. Like well, everybody's gonna be so goddamn impressed that you walk around in abandoned houses, fucking talking to nobody with your tape recorder. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I don't oh, you, wanna, I don't you know have a, a special ghost tape recorder. Great. And they don't. <laughs> They're just regular digital yeah. recorders. Whatever. And we've heard some cool EPs and stuff, but it's yeah. like EVPs. I mean, but it's like uh, we've heard some cool EPs, and we've too. got some cool EPs yeah. that we play during the break. But it's fucking. I, I'm just. I don't know. Thinking we go with more regular people yeah kind of yeah <laughs> kind of thinking that your average joe and you know people like i don't know how many of the paranormal people will agree to do something and then just not return messages 
They're just antisocial. Yeah. Fucking weirdos. That or they hop on YouTube and listen to 10 minutes of the show and decide, you know uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, too. Maybe, uh, this maybe is I a can't PR contend suicide. with that. Yeah. yeah. I shouldn't be involved in this. That's true. Whoops. A lot of people are going to hear us and go, ah, I can't can't do it speaking yeah. of which that he uh, just said the word gypsy i won't i'm not <laughs> yeah. i was about to show. say that G, the they, g word they throw what the g word around a lot on that show i don't know uh let's real quick talk about bin laden yeah we want to do that that came up again lately i've known since day fucking one going back to me becoming a truther again fuck all of you that shit was the most retarded cover-up i've ever seen in my life and if you believed they shot bin laden uh, when they said they did, whenever that was a couple years ago, the Navy SEALs went in that house and shot Bin Laden. You're a fucking dunce. You're a halfwit. Okay? Agreed. I mean, Agreed. if you actually believe that shit, I don't respect you as a human being. Right. Sorry. And that burial at sea bullshit. What, yeah. Well, yeah, we just took him off. We just took him and threw him off a boat, according to Muslim tradition. We cared so much about Muslim tradition that we broke into his house and shot him in the face. Because that doesn't go against Muslim tradition. Shooting a Muslim leader in the face is fine. But then we had to bury him at yeah, sea. Not, yeah. Which. Not I believe I don't know. I'm not an expert. No, they on this. said that was so that nobody would make like a shrine to him or whatever. no. Their first Wasn't explanation was we did it to like make sure we didn't cause more of an uproar. We wanted to do their like traditional. There's no yeah. Muslim yeah. shit about putting them in sea. That's not it. Yeah. Muslim. And also, I'm pretty sure that's what they said at first. Yeah, but that's like, just not no, true. It's, it's fucking absurd. <laughs> and creating an anti-Muslim and uh, Islamophobic. Uh, like haze and all of them. Oh, they're real worried enough, about that. You know, they're real worried about that. <laughs> it's like, um, but so that there, I mean, there was not only how dumb. Oh, and then the fucking what was the situation room photo? Was, yeah, I'll put that up on the page for everybody. Was right staged now. where they show like Hillary Clinton and whoever yeah, else is supposedly um, in there. Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton. Um, All morbidly looking at right. a nine-inch monitor. I'm sure it was yeah. a fucking yeah. phone. Like even if yeah. it was real, like let's just just for there, a second right there on the say that it actually happened the way they said it did. That would be stage two because it would just be a fucking phone call. It would right. be like, uh, yeah, yeah, do that, and then that would be that. No, and then they came out later and and said, well, actually, we lost the feed for 26 minutes or whatever. The during, head of the during, CIA. Yeah, during which time he was killed. So we found out about it later. So there's no. There's no fucking reason they're staging that photo other than the other other than to add to the cover up. I mean yeah, there's no to trick you. It's just fucking it's <laughs> it, it's not it's not a thing where they go, Oh shit, we didn't get to take the real photo, so we need one of these for the press. I don't buy that. It's a part of the whole plan. It's part of the whole yeah. fucking plan. Um so you had that, and if that's if all of the shit in and around the actual event, the fact that the fucking neighbors did interviews with the BBC that said that wasn't Bin Laden, that was a guy that looked kind of like him, but we knew that guy. They just yeah. killed our friend, fucking <laughs> whoever. How do you? What I can't even think of that a name. Was like, Rahim. <laughs> Rahim. Sure. Uh, yeah. No, that was that was Wilson. <laughs> Talk over the fence. This is bullshit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he was brown and had a beard. Right. They're no, killing everyone that looks like that. That would, uh, uh, So, I mean, not only all of that shit, the, the most obvious fucking cover-up ever in the history of the world, whatever it was a few months later, they kill off fucking half the, the SEAL Team 6 in that stupid Chinook helicopter, yeah. which they don't even fucking normally travel in, right? No. Navy SEALs are and always the- in a fucking Black Hawk, tricked out. You know, uh, everything. I, I, they're in a fucking 25-year-old Chinook going also, to do a rescue mission for some... But, but hold on, let me get through this. Okay. So then they go to do this rescue mission, supposedly to cap, uh, to scoop up some POWs. And they do it successfully, supposedly, again. And while they're in this facility, whatever, killing people and fucking rescuing shit, they... Uh, a, a Taliban member, which I always thought they were out of the picture by now too. <laughs> so suppo- I remember the story was a Taliban member planted a bomb on the helicopter. They all got back in, took off, and it blew up. Right. That sounds awfully action movie. It's very like, GI Joe. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? That's um, like Cobra planted a, <laughs> a bomb yeah. on, you know, fucking. Yeah. No, it's very un- was- unrealistic. <laughs> what do they leave the whole helicopter empty when they do rescue missions? <laughs> right. Nobody stays behind at the <laughs> helicopter. The pilot gets out. Hey man, yeah. you lock Come the on. helicopter up. Yeah. Oh fuck. Yeah. Don't um, worry, the Taliban are all gone. They would never Furthermore, have thought of that. You know, a guy, a guy running into an empty helicopter. Nobody ever would have. This is only the most sophisticated fucking, uh, you know, band of of military dudes in the world. You know, you're talking. These guys are fucking smart, tactical geniuses. You know, this is yeah. not. 
whatever. Go They're ahead. like the cream of the crop. Okay, so there were 22 Navy SEALs on that Chinook helicopter. Right. Which, uh... Which they never say exactly which SEALs take part in any mission, but I'm going to go ahead and guess that the 22 SEALs that were killed right after the obviously staged Bin Laden killing were probably contained all the SEALs involved in that mission. Yeah, up it was up there for sure. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, then, there's no reason that that many of that elite would be traveling all together in one aircraft. They never do shit that way. Yeah. Furthermore, this mission was taking place on a hillside. There was also at the and time... And Chinook is the... Would not the ideal craft. What you want is two, you know, multiple smaller crafts, which they had plenty of access to, whereas the Chinook is big and bulky and difficult but to maneuver. But that's what I'm saying. And, even, yeah. even for their cover-ups, they're going to save a few bucks. Why, yeah. should, why should we fucking blow up a Blackhawk? Right. Let's fucking get rid of one of these old uh, Rambo helicopters that we got laying around. Yeah, but it's just like nothing, nothing about the way they were doing it made any sense. And then... The story that came out later was, oh, well, yeah, it was super weird that that uh, bomb was on our our helicopter, but now we say that the Afghan government, who directed them to that spot, set them up to go there on purpose because they knew that somebody was going to be there to plant the bomb, and right. that's what they were saying. That was the story. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that's real. That's real that, nice. Okay. Yeah. So so then, <laughs> hold on. So then, if that wasn't enough for you. Then a few months after that, the stupid boat that they supposedly threw him off of, and we got a caller on the line. We're going to wrap this up and we'll get right to you. All right. Uh, the, uh, the boat that they threw Bin Laden's body off of, supposedly, the ninth time he was declared dead by a major world government, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll post that article. The ninth for time he's declared dead by a, a major world government, uh, the boat that they took him out to sea on... Eh, <sighs> Again, how fucking stupid. Why? As though they don't have any fucking strongholds over there that they can take him to. You know, like, <laughs> what the fuck? Anyways, they, the boat that they take him out to the sea on, all the sailors from that boat got dishonorably discharged for the use of synthetic marijuana. All 64 of them. 64 sailors, uh, all from that fucking vessel. Do you, do you have the name of it? or? Uh, um, hold on. I'm 64 people. I remember hearing that on the radio. It's just a blip in the in the mainstream news. Just like, oh, and by the way, sixty four members of the of the boat that uh, Bin Laden's body was dumped off of were all dishonorably discharged for using synthetic marijuana. Like, nobody thinks that sounds a little fucked up. Sixty four people. I what? There's five uh five of us in this room. I bet not one of us would smoke that bullshit right now. <laughs> right. No. <laughs> like, and isn't 64? it legal though? Isn't that the whole point? Yeah, and they might have get, you might do it if you couldn't get weed ever, you know what I mean? But 64 people Oh, yeah, are Navy guys synthetic. are never around drugs. Right. Oh yeah, there's no drugs in the military. Not like the boats um, loaded with them. The Vincent was the name of the boat. Vincent. The Vincent V A N S O N. Uh, um, oh, Vincent. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see, 49 of the 64 were purportedly selling it, synthetic weed. To who? Each other? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> like, yeah. The that's fuck wonderful. is they're, going they're on? They're on a boat, yeah. Dude, Where, who's there? No, the story makes <laughs> zero fucking Anyone sense. Anyone who actually smokes weed uh, hears that and goes, that's fucking ridiculous. That's not But grandma believable. and grandpa are like, oh my god, that's atrocious. Uh, <laughs> that might be what it is. That might be all they rely on. Yeah, yeah. That might you might be right about the that. The voters will totally buy. The this. voters will They'll fucking eat this shit yeah, up. That's true. Um, but yeah, anyone who's ever been around weed and synthetic weed, you know, you'd only smoke synthetic weed. I smoked synthetic weed when I was in rehab for four months, and I could not. I had a drug test every four days, and I literally just could not get away with anything. So I would smoke that fucking shit, you know, because I was an outpatient, so I get to go home. So I, I would go to the gas station where the Indian guy would sell it to me as though it was illegal when it wasn't, but he would pull it out of a fucking cardboard box from under the counter. You'd have to go in and be like, <laughs> dude, you got uh, you got that K2 or whatever? And he'd you got be any like, spice? You got any spice? And he'd be like, oh, yes, yes, yes. Hold on, hold on. He'd like wait for people to leave. <laughs> like It was like when Apu gives Homer the fireworks, you know? Yeah. Fucking old episode. Uh, <laughs> he'd wait for everyone to leave and... Okay, all right, here, quick, 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 $30, $30, you know? Like, yeah. All right, two little fucking grams of shit for $30. Oh, my God. That shit was disgusting. and you That's how I'm telling you. You would only smoke it out of desperation. That's yeah. the only way. Yeah, that shit will fuck you so up. So to too. wrap this up, why? Well, that's basically now Now the uh, mainstream media is is getting on board going like, well, 
it seems like there wasn't any proof. That's right. why this is back in the news, right? Yeah. What exactly is happening? Um, well, what happened was the CIA admitted that they had a complete blackout with the communication. That was recently they admitted that? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that was just this past week. So they said that they uh, <laughs> really didn't know just exactly what was going on. Yeah, there you go. For 20... <laughs> okay. Between 20 and 25 minutes. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, anybody uh, anybody got any questions on whether or not that whole thing was completely fake? <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah oh, uh, I, uh, uh, President Obama, you don't <laughs> seem interested enough in the fake monitor. We need, yeah. you, we need you to look a little harder at it. Yeah. Uh, Hillary, Hillary, put your hand by your Dude, face. That, yeah, she's like, oh, oh, oh yeah. my. Oh, yeah. no. Fucking warlords gasping at, at, yeah. at, at, at uh, their supposed enemy getting killed. No, sorry. Who else was in the room there? Did I see? Uh, Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Yeah. Um, a bunch of, a bunch of you fucking. You know, yeah, all those people. All the world. All right. Yeah. Um, the whole cast and crew. Stizzy's on the line. He wants to talk about the Silk Road guy. Oh, Let's all bring right. Bring all that shit up. Hello. Hey, uh, hey. So before we get into that, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to talk to uh, Vinny uh, because he seems to hate the troops and like all those guys <laughs> do a bunch of hard work to go kill the troops, and they're just going pouring, uh, pouring a bunch of uh, toxic shit on them because you know they're working hard to do all that stuff and they work really hard. And I, I think you. I think you take a little bit of out of the time out of your day to go support the troops and clap them for killing Bin Laden. I mean, that's all I'm saying. All right. Well, and not only that, fair enough. Wait, not only serious? that, Are but they serious? caught a big drug kingpin who is on Osama Bin Laden level yeah. of terrorism. Uh, he was trying to give uh, pot to the kids without having to go into the dirty alleys and stuff and uh, picking them up and getting. You know, you can get stabbed about, uh, and stuff in an alley, but picking up on the internet, getting shipped to your door, you know. You're that's talking about thing. Ross Albright? He, that uh, was, that was a weird thing. transition he just did, but yeah, yeah. He's, he's going into the... <laughs> yeah, no, he's kidding. I'm man. getting it. Um, oh, okay, okay. I was, I was, <laughs> yeah, like, I was yeah. like, that's Make sarcasm, right? I'm, like, I'm, okay. I'm very much kidding. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so... Um, then uh, <laughs> we met our, our friend Matt is just looking around like what the f- who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> like, what, what was that? Sorry, um, man. I'm sorry. He's one of them. Yeah, he's he's a lib. He's a libtard. Lib- he's on <laughs> our side. That's okay. So am I. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry. No, I was talking about you. My guess oh, is he can have their guns, but sure, you can't surely have guns and weed at the same time. That's just you know, <laughs> that's, that's too much fun. Um. All right. So let's get into this guy. Uh, Stizzy was all, uh, seemed to be all in the know about this, so I told him to call in, and this is our buddy, our buddy from way back. Uh, what, uh, Andrew, do you want to kind of give him people the introduction? Does, do people know what the Silk Road is? Do we have to explain that for people? We can give it, it's I, I, I would like, to, I would like to point out the reason that I called in is that people do not know. People that I question, uh, you know, at work, on the streets, whatever, they have no idea what it is. Even today, when this guy gets, uh, sentenced life to, uh, life in prison. Jesus Christ. Uh, but going back a couple weeks, they had no knowledge of what the Silk Road was, what the Dark Web was how you could buy drugs on the internet and and all that. So, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, nobody knows what is going on out there. Uh, so just, let's let's give fuck, people. Let, let who me, the fuck is uh, uh you know Snowden? Yeah, whatever. Let's uh let's Andrea give people a rundown on the on the Silk Road really quick. The first of all, the dark net. You access it through a Tor browser. We've done it before. Yeah. It's a big fucking process. You got to get like a key. Um, it's secret. Yeah, it's you, hard you, to get to. It's, it's hard to anonymous. get to. You've got to go through all kinds of shit, and eventually, you probably have it's to encrypted. email someone and fucking ask them a question and stuff. Yeah. And like, <laughs> no, it's really fucking hard. And um, well, at least it was for me, who's not. I'm not incredibly savvy at this kind of shit. But uh, yeah. So, so then once you're on this Tor browser, you're basically on the dark net. You're on a version of the internet that's that's not watched. It's off the grid. It's off the grid, and really? it's a different network. It's not the internet that we know is the internet. It's a, another internet, basically. Yeah. So, it's, at least that's how I understand it. I could be wrong. It was started started by the Navy. Crack. Um. So, so anyways, so on this platform or this fucking whatever is a site called the Silk Road, and this was uh, Ross Albright's. Is that how you say your name? Yeah. Um. So, 
this was a kind of a version of eBay where things were unregulated was, and you could get anything. It was I mean, an anonymous selling and trading network. Where th- it's completely unregulated. Yeah. Not and, completely unregulated. I, oh, they actually did have rules. You couldn't buy or sell uh, weapons of any kind. Um, you couldn't buy or sell. That's not true. That's oh, not true. You well, officially, those are the official. Wait, no, that's, that's what she said. You could not buy weapons. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. I'd, I'd like to point out that whenever uh, people will say anarchy broke out somewhere, like in the Ukraine, anarchy broke broke out. out. Oh, my God, they had a f- truly free open marketplace where people just went up and freely exchanged goods Dangerous. without government intervention? Oh, that sounds like a wonderful thing. But, hey, who will protect you from from uh, from poisonous ingredients in your food if not for the FDA? Well, they'll catch them way after the fact, so you can be sure of um, <laughs> they won't punish anybody after the fact. Um, so what happened with this guy is they started going after him because they said he was trying to hire a hitman or something. Uh, that was all pretty murky. Never really came to light, and he was never charged with anything. But they basically got into his life. Yeah. And 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 I guess some and caught up with him somewhere. And... They've caught up with him in a library. He right, was right. using a public internet to do something. To work to on the site, you know, him. or yeah. whatever. So so he gets caught basically with while he's logged in to everything. Yeah. And as I understand it, Stizzy, you were saying they took screenshots of everything and that was what they used as evidence in, in the trial was, was they took screenshots of his laptop while he was logged into the Please. site. Basically, I'm not too technically savvy where I get into all the blockchain stuff, and I don't know how that works, uh, but I do understand uh, legal ramifications, and it, this trial was a farce, but from what I understand is their evidence against them was some screenshots, and then they said they did some things uh, about how they cracked into it to find him originally and find out where he was but refused to explain it and then refused right, to... Right, because they would have had, they would have had to have uh, break, broken the law to, to, to get into the right, servers to find him. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. The, their, their, their little bit of how they did it uh, was um, <laughs> that doesn't exist. Um, so they, the defense attorney offered somebody up to explain how this stuff works, to try and explain how this is not possible, and it was not allowed by the judge because the judge pretty much from the start, uh, was going to put this guy away for life. And that's how this trial was set up. And like I said from the beginning, um, sorry, I'm trying to move Matt's <laughs> mic away while he keeps smoking that fucking thing. Yeah, try to just smoke that away from your mic. It's just like, yeah. I was going to say, um, NPR, uh, NPR had reported that... NPR's um, jocks smoke, smoke vapes mm-hmm. while they... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the hell, man? Yeah. Um, no, NPR had, uh, had said that um, to them, it looked like he was being set up because the FBI guy that he supposedly hired to kill this other guy turned around and was blackmailing him before this even came right. to trial and shit. Right, well, the, 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 there's two things about that, that statement. The first off is that uh, he was a hitman and he was hiring people to kill pe- other people, and that was never brought up. He was never charged with that because they didn't have a case for it. Right. None of the so they murders didn't actually a case for it, But they were somehow allowed by this judge to bring that into court, something that had never been proven um, in court, and they'd never made an allegation of it through the court system, but that was allowed. So that's one thing, and that's nuts that that was ever allowed. The second thing is that these, these two, uh, one of them was a... Uh, um, Secret Service officer, and the other one was a DEA, I believe, yeah. officer. Yes. The guys that and embezzled the, were, uh... the two of them were charged after them, uh, after the the Ross Albert, uh verdict came down. Um, they were Rick? charged with Rick? stealing from the government because yeah. they went in there and realized how well this guy was doing and created companies of their own to funnel money away. They right. took all the Bitcoin and tried to put it in their own pocket. And the government slapped him on the wrist and said, hey, fine if you steal this shit from the drug kingpin on the free market, but no, you work for the government, you don't steal from the government. Right. <laughs> so I would throw that, uh, that ev- any piece of evidence from these, uh, these two guys, uh, 
all their evidence is based on liars and thieves. Right. At yeah. this point. And no, I was throwing they, it all they away. Should be completely, they should be com- considered completely uh, uncredible. You know, they yeah. should be what it was <laughs> incredible incredible they, they, these guys are incredible um, no. they are it's though, incredible the, that they thought they could get away with it i agree right. <laughs> yeah yeah no it's it's unbelievable um and and just the hypocrisy of it like we're gonna make an example out of this guy because he's oh, trying to sure will there well they're the reason and i'll tell you this and this is this is a hundred percent true i don't care what anybody says like like stizzy here said the judge had her mind made up from day one Prosecutor had his mind made up from day one. Everybody important had their mind up, made up from day one because the only motivation here is to put a monkey on a stick to say, hey, this is what happens when you try to trade without us. This is yeah. what we really give a shit about. You can. This dr- is what you get. You can go out and fucking rape. You can kill and get 15 for it. You mm-hmm. can fucking do all kinds of shit. But if you try to fucking give people hope that you can live life without us, we will come the fuck down on you. That yeah. this is life in prison for what? Right. Forever. Just life, forever. They, running a website. Running a website. For running a website. Running that, a website. That, he's only 31. Craigslist. Yeah. What has happened to oh, Craigslist God. that some guy hasn't gone down? Like, he's a kingpin hooker runner. Like, he's a kingpin uh, prostitution. Right. You know, that guy, that guy that runs Craig, you better bring Craig down for the biggest prostitution runner ever. Sure, Craigslist has if been responsible that, for all kinds of if murders. If you're going to do yeah. that, hey, if you want to sell drugs, you know how a lot of them go through the mail? The U.S. Uh, Postal Service. So, if you're going to be a kingpin, I'd, uh, you know, start filing charges on the federal government for running this institution that runs drugs all across the country. <laughs> right. right, yeah, and exactly. And they, they can claim they have no knowledge of what goes on. But hey, they're running it, so, you know, you're a drug kingpin. Exactly. He's providing a service. He's not personally approving. Ross, the guy from uh, the, Silk, uh, uh, the yeah, Silk, Road, Silk Road, is not personally approving every fucking transaction. He's he was he was charged. Uh, the, the first sales within the Silk Road were... Uh, allegedly mushrooms that he grew himself. Good. Who cares? So there are charges on that. Yeah. Um, that's what they got him with originally. So fine. He sold a couple ounces of mushrooms. Yeah. So life deal with that. Prison. He's not right. a drug kingpin. Fucking you want to get him prison. for that? Good. You got good charges on him. Whatever. BP <sighs> just fucking spilled something not that like... That, not that that's a crime. Dude, it's... The, compl- uh, I, I assuming the, the, uh, the buyer was a willing uh, participant in the exchange and everybody's happy with the exchange and they shake hands and make their merry way around. And I'm assuming that. he's going to appeal, though, and everything. There'll right? be appeals, I mean, but I, I don't see him getting out of it. They're, this is my point. They are not going to let something like this go. No, but and who's they? The, the fucking them. Right. It's, the, it's not like the he's, establishment. It's not oh. like he just spilled nine point them. something billion gallons of oil in our in our ocean. I right. Mean, that's then, forgivable. Wait, right. Wait. It's not. It's not like he filled the fucking <laughs> Gulf with oil and right. then bought a company to get the contract to clean it up. Right. <laughs> or sent us all to war. That's the kind of shit. Lies. Yeah, yeah. That's the kind of shit you can do if you've got the right sure, government sure. affiliations. Halliburton bought this company, Boots and Coots, right before that fucking shit happened. They knew that thing was going to spring. They made two hundred million dollars on the cleanup. Right. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. That's totally fine. But USA. Yeah. Provide a provide a platform for people to exchange freely. And you're right. There's not one single person that did anything or had anything done to them without their consent. And through this mm-hmm. entire process. Yes, you're right. And I'm, now I'm going to wax uh, sarcastically and say, hey, the government told you before you started this thing, you know full well the only way to go into the drug selling company is to create a uh, global uh, corporation uh, which buys the government to influence uh, the FDA's ruling about which drugs are bought and sold. And you're an idiot if you ever try and do it out of your garage. You're an idiot if you ever try to do it on the internet. Right. You know, slap well, no, on the is, wrist for the everybody thing, else like, who uh, makes poisonous drugs to the masses by the millions. But if you're just facilitating um, voluntary commerce by the way of a website, 
away with you for the rest of your life. Right. Yeah. That's about all it is. I yeah. Mean, we it, talked about the Sarnayev kid too, right? Like mm-hmm. there's another person that I feel unjustly got life in prison. I mean, or he's getting the death penalty in fact. Yeah. Why? Because you don't think he was guilty? No, I think he was guilty, but oh. the whole system of our prison thing is supposed to be rehabilitation. He's so young, of well, course you he's actually, rehabilitable. I don't like, know. Of course he is. He'll regret that next month. He's so young. You're not we said this on the show last time. You don't even think clearly basically until you're thirty. Right. He's he was seventeen when he did this, highly influenced by his older brother. Dude, I would have done anything my brother told me to do when I was a kid. Yeah, I guess I don't know. I don't even want to go into it because that's another well, thing. I no, just don't no, believe I, the I would story like to go all, into but... it, and I'd like to tie it back to um, Albrecht well, because he's, he's, thing. he's sent a, a plea letter to the judge, and he begged for the rest of his life because he got a, he was basically the life sentence, so, and the minimal was like thirty years or something. Yeah, and Funny. basically his letter to the judge was. Please give me a light at the end of the tunnel. Let, let me spend my, you know, elder years out of the open. Let me have something to hope for. Uh-huh. And I would point healthy. out that everybody changes. Like, uh, the cells in your body are completely regenerated, regenerated, like, maybe four times by the time you're out of that 30-year sentence. You're a completely new person, um, whatever. Um, but yeah, the death you. penalty, I would not, I would not trust my mail with the federal government and to pick somebody to die. Um, there's so many reasons for it. Uh, you know, if you want to go, uh, conservative, uh, uh, argument against it about how it's, it's not cheaper. It's very more expensive to put somebody on death row for 30 years in appeals, uh, because of the kind of guys that appeal it. Um, and it's, it's, it doesn't fix anybody. I mean, it, well, killing him fix a criminal, but you don't know if he's a criminal because it's federal government picking and choosing who's a criminal. Um, Based on what's convenient but it really for them. Yeah. Fix, it, it really doesn't fix anybody uh, putting him in the whole the, the system to begin with. So, um, All right. Yeah. Yeah, well, that pretty much sums it up. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I I don't want to just keep going around in circles and saying what bullshit this is. Well, but speaking of appeals, I saw that Suge Knight is appealing. He's trying to get out of jail for you know killing those people in his car or whatever he did. Uh, he's an <laughs> ass. <laughs> right, I was gonna say, but there's somebody we probably don't feel as sorry for. You know? Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, what else? What else you got on this? Because we're gonna move along, and I know you've got to hit the hay, Brian. All right, fine. I was going to make a joke about how Shug Knight wasn't in there and it turned out it was nothing but a gangster party and he wanted to get out. <laughs> well, sorry, you could have just made the joke if you wanted. Yeah. Um, no, I wanted to make it as brightly as possible. Yeah, all right, all right. sorry. Well, all right, well, we got to let you go and move on, but thank you for your uh, thank yeah. you for your input there. I'm going to bed. I'll catch the rest on YouTube. Thank you good very night. much. All right. Have a good night. See and, you later. Uh, you know, stay Boston strong or something. Boston? Know. <laughs> you know, Boston Have strong. a good night. All right, later. All right, bye. All right, there he goes. Yeah, his... Uh, Ross Albright's letter to the judge prior to sentencing is pretty devastating to read. It's really sad, especially knowing that he got life in prison it almost sounds like it almost kind of made me mad <clears throat> although i've never been facing life in prison yeah. it sounded like groveling although i, I guess you can't blame him but it yeah, was just I like really, yeah. it, it's just like you know and he's trying to talk to literally a monster i guess not yeah. literally but he's talking he's talking to the judge mm-hmm. dude i don't care who they are i've had arguments with people about this before because i have friends who have a friend who's a prosecutor and i'm like yeah well He's a piece of garbage. Well, how do you know? Because his job is to put fucking people for, away for victimless crimes. That's 95% of what he fucking does. Mm-hmm. He's not doing that many rapes and murders, no matter who he is. Sorry. But, you know, that judge and that prosecutor are a piece of fucking shit, both of them. Be, yeah. No matter what they've done in the past or in the future. So he's writing a letter to monsters. Yeah. And going, how can I get these fucking soulless pieces of garbage to listen to me you know how can i make them see me as a human right he did not he didn't he didn't win no <clears throat> wait i've got some quick facts on his case here that i think are pretty compelling too 
Um, the government has cited no victims for any of his alleged crimes or charges. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> he was charged with seven. He had seven separate counts against him, uh, including one one count of distributing or aiding and abetting the distribution of narcotics. Uh, contradicted by his fourth count, which was engagement in a continuing criminal en- enterprise as a kingpin, uh, which contradicts count one because you can't be an organizer and an aider or a better. So how did they convict him of both of those? Because it doesn't matter. Right. None of this matters because they're just putting a guy away to set an example. It doesn't matter how they right. do it. It's right. theater. It's it totally is theater. theater. Yeah. yeah. Um, also... He was convicted of conspiring with others to commit or aid and abet computer hacking. However, no hacking was proven in any way, and no one came forward to say their computer was hacked. They just made it up. Dude. I mean, it was just like something that could have happened. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing to it. So I'm going to post the link to this. It's the official legal defense fund of the Albright family. It's got everything in there. It's actually really interesting. There's a lot of weird little details in this case that uh, that'll probably make you really mad if you read them. So I'm going to put it on the page for everybody. Oh, dude, this thing... I. I mean, I fucking went through a lot of feelings reading about this and and yeah. thinking about it. Like, fu- I've been absolutely furious. I've been fucking depressed. Like, just thinking about this fucking dude. Who Who's really, your age? Who is my exact age? Mm-hmm. We should really consider him to be a fucking hero. You know, yeah, and a visionary. Well, I think he is. Really I don't know if he's a hero, but he's an entrepreneur. And nah, dude, don't we respect that in this country? I thought some, to, when you. To find a loophole and you that's good business i thought like nah but to do something that br- i consider him to be a hero to fucking do something that brave and yeah. and really to provide that that kind of free trade snowden yeah. um, edward snowden is a hero there could I, be more than one hero i agree but i don't know no. I, just, I hesitate to use the word hero for him not not it, just anybody who runs a website i don't know if you're a hero God bless the troops. I stand the by one of the real heroes. I pioneer over hero, maybe. Well, I still say I, I agree with, I yeah. totally agree with Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Fuck pioneer. Guys, I don't give a shit. Hero. Yeah. Couch boys <laughs> say pioneer. He, uh, Couch he, boys. near. That's what he is. There we go. Fuck all of you. This is my show. He's a hero. <laughs> Pi- pirate um, hero. Okay. He's a hero. <laughs> you guys, uh, what do we got coming up? Uh, let's talk about, real quick, what we got on Thursday. Um, our special guest that's going to be calling in. Can you pull up that story? Yeah. Yes. Let's do that. Why do you look so confused? Um, <clears throat> because it just took me a moment to remember what I should do. That's all. I was confused. All right. We have, uh, we have, this really is a upsetting story. I I was reading about this today. Yeah, um, can you, you <clears throat> go through this story a little bit and, um, let people know what's going on because the the victim in this case we're gonna have his sister on this on thursday, thursday yeah so so uh it this was salt lake city utah um a uh man named joey tucker was shot and killed by a police officer this was six years ago um <clears throat> and the family settled eventually uh after charges were not brought against the police officer. They settled for $100,000. Um, they also set up a Facebook page to kind of uh, memorialize and and try to seek justice in other ways for their fallen family member. And then the police officer who committed the murder gets on the Facebook page and starts posting taunting messages. Um, he was... Yeah, he, I mean... They were half taunting, half like just drunk idiot. Yeah, just being indignant. You know? Yeah, um, he really thought he didn't do anything wrong. Right. Um, but we're gonna but play they the were video. Incredibly insensitive. Are we gonna check the video out today? Should we do it today? Sure. Yeah, we probably should. We'll do that when we come back from break. Uh, but I've seen the video before. I remember when this happened. Yeah. Um, we've covered a shitload of these stories and been seeing this for years, but. Yeah, the I if I remember if, if it's a video I remember it shows ex- very clearly that the guy was trying to back away from the police and they yeah. say that he was going forward to try to run them over, but then it got into the report that the car was in reverse. Yeah, when they found when they uh, took his body out of the car, it was still in reverse. <clears throat> the car was still in reverse. Yeah. It's, t- it's just another thing, and then the guy got away with it. The yeah. cop completely got away with it. From what I hear, the prosecutor. From what his sister said today, the prosecutor would not 
do anything. There's a new prosecutor in town, so they're going to try their Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, again. they're petitioning right now in order to get this new prose- prosecutor right, yeah, to yeah. Uh, pay attention. So we'll so. check. We'll we'll give you guys all the info on that Thursday, and we'll check out this video. Yeah. Uh, when we come back, but yeah, Melinda is her name, and uh, she's going to be on with us to talk about the whole thing, which I'm, you know, looking forward to. It's like such a fucking sad situation that you don't want to say like, oh, this will be fun. Yeah. You know, it's like, but I am, uh, it'll be interesting. I'm looking forward to just kind of try like doing whatever we can to help because right. it's going to take a lot of small people to get this story out and yeah. you know, so we'll, we'll try to get it to our, our crowd and whatever. So you guys out there, uh, be ready for that this Thursday. And let's try to support this family. Who, yeah, definitely. Uh, who really, really can't get any fucking justice, uh, you know, after their son and brother was was murdered, you know, by an overzealous fucking thug yeah. cop. So that's that on Thursday. Uh, what else we got Thursday. tonight? Uh, tonight we have uh, Annie Dukin. I cannot wait to talk about Miss Annie Dukin, who forged drug test results yeah, for 14 years bitch. right uh just just lovely all right come on go go, go. um what we got? we've got it's reasons supposed to take like 10 seconds reasons why the military isn't to be thanked for your freedom mm-hmm. um then we've got ghosts and ufos more cop stuff maybe we've got a couple updates coming up too so stick around all right back in a minute night night kids oh yeah matt gear's leaving so we'll see him next week goodbye Bye, matt, matt gear How we bring it what is he saying? Are we finished now? We here to let him know. Something about um, a peaceful leader with metal teeth. Yeah, remember it was I think one of the dudes from fucking Baltimore who was allegedly kidnapped by the police, but oh, he was right. like the new nonviolent. Yeah, I totally leader. called him out as a fucking plant. Mm-hmm. What happened? Did any? Did we learn anything? Now we should or? check up on him again. Yeah, uh, we'll follow up on that. Let's check out this Joey Tucker police execution. This is a uh, again. His sister's going to be on the show this Thursday, but this is the original dash cam video. Um, so you guys can see this. You've got them pit maneuvering this pickup truck. He crashes into them, uh, you know, because he flips around on the highway there. They they do the old whatever pit maneuver. Hey, so he's now facing the wrong way on the highway. And as you can see here, the cops get out in front of him, right? Mm-hmm. In front of the hood of his pickup truck. Now, watch. He's going to go backwards, and they're going to chase after him and shoot him. Check this out. He runs alongside of the pickup truck as the guy's trying to back away. This cop runs alongside. Oh, look, and he he fires three shots, and they're about five seconds apart, you know? Yeah. He fires one shot, two shots, and then a few seconds later, fires another shot. And you can see the guy is still moving in the truck at this point, um, but... Yeah, that was incredibly deliberate and psychotic. Yeah, and also, uh, we don't have the audio on this video, or I don't know if maybe the audio is just not on it. But um, No, there's no audio. There, uh, I read that in the original audio of the video, you can hear one of the other officers after this officer fires his gun. You hear one of the other officers say, oh shit, oh no. Right. No, why did you do that? Right. So let's this just, again, yeah. I know nobody can see this at home, but we're, we're just going to verify again. You guys are all in agreement, right? It's pretty fucking obvious. This guy's backing away from yeah. the police. He the, the cop runs alongside the truck, keeps up with him, shoots him three times, and then claims he was trying to run him over. Yeah. Yeah. And then this cop wonders what the family's mad about. Yeah. Dude, what a fucking... He deserves Retard. to die. He deserves to be killed. He's a flabbergasted moron. He's a fucking... He's a piece of shit. He His like, mind is probably obliterated. He's probably been an alcoholic for many years, had mental problems. His his He's not a... He, I mean, no fucking normal person could behave this way and then think that they were in the right. He no. ran over to that thing like a fat kid chasing a cheeseburger. Right. Yeah. He just couldn't wait to fucking waste somebody. Right, and there was no reason to at all. He didn't say, oh, we thought he pulled a gun. No. There was a high-speed pursuit before this. He had his adrenaline going, and he was just like, I'm fucking killing this guy. And apparently, I'm awesome. Apparently, from what they're saying, he was 
uh, having a he was in some kind of diabetic shock. I've seen people go into diabetic shock. They make no sense. Yeah. They just start acting weird and crazy. Yeah, and it's like I, a crazy. Switch. I could easily see somebody doing this while they're fucking while while they're fucked up from their diabetes. You Wait, know? Hold yeah. on. The guy who got shot was in diabetic shock. Or? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. And that's what was supposedly going on. Is he was driving around acting weird. And um, <clears throat> nobody knew what was what was wrong. You know, they thought maybe probably people thought he was drunk or whatever. I don't know. But he got in a, he got in a couple of uh, he got in a couple of low speed accidents, I guess. And yeah. Then, and then like, the cops started chasing him around. Tapped a couple oh, cars. Wow. Right. Yeah. So the cops started chasing him around. All right. Fine. You know, maybe you think there's something crazy going on. Whatever. But you don't. <sighs> yeah. I mean, it's stu- prevent a drunk driver from was, killing but, innocent people but like but kill the drunk driver now look he's yeah. sitting there at his car but he's obviously he wasn't drunk but he the cop that shot him is goes back to his car and is drinking a bottle of water walking around casually while they're <laughs> while they're trying to do a uh, cpr he's walking around like he's got a thumb up his butt yeah what a fucking yeah. piece of shit. What a fucking piece of shit. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Uh, so we're going to go... We're, when she's on this Thursday, we're going to talk all about this cop. We're going to get in depth uh, about their lawsuit. We're going to talk about this fucking piece of shit cop who has been in trouble since like 93 with other departments and shit or 95 or something. Oh, he's dude. He's been fired before, uh, sued his department because everyone called him crazy and, and said he shouldn't be a cop and stuff. He was completely nuts. So, I mean, this guy's been on record a lunatic for yeah. quite some time. Um, has used, he's gotten in trouble for using police resources for personal fucking, like, relationship stuff, you know, running plates and trying to fucking spy on some ex of his and Ugh. stuff. And, like, you know, yeah. Classic, Look, here, here the classic other cop, crazy the, uh, stuff. The other cop comes over here and puts his hand on his shoulder. Hey, you had to do it, man. I saw the whole thing. The guy was backing away into a median. Couldn't put up with that. We're going to lie for you, bud. Don't worry. We'll take care of this. We will take care of this. So yeah, that's uh, that's the Joey Tucker situation. What else do we have in police news? Uh, we also have uh, a crowd attacks a Florida cop during arrest, and they try to prevent. Let's see, this was in Melbourne, Florida. Uh, passersby circled an officer trying to make an arrest and began fighting him off. So they actually ganged up on a cop that they thought was arresting somebody. Nice. Without a good reason. And tried to keep him from arresting. Why him. were they trying to arrest him? Phoenix <clears throat> Lowe is the guy's name. Phoenix Lowe, yeah. Uh, ordinance, a minor ordinance violation. Yeah. Um, so any, any I don't know reason. what that means, but <laughs> probably the, he he probably fucking didn't suck the cop's dick enough. You yeah. know, he he didn't fucking bow down in front of him, and and the cop goes, okay. Yeah, you know how they fucking just find yeah any little thing. Oh, you know? your shoelaces don't match. And you know what? It takes quite quite a bit for people to actually stand up for each other. So yeah, this so must, it must this, have been especially yeah, must shitty. must have been an extreme case. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. The idea of arresting Lowe seems so ridiculous to the people who witnessed it that many of them jumped to the f- to it jumped in to fight the cop off of him. At this point, Lowe fled, but the officer caught back up with him. That's when a somewhat large crowd surrounded the officer and began to interfere with attempts to arrest Lowe by yelling, striking, and pulling at the officer and the prisoner. The arresting officer said he used less lethal force on the crowd, which could mean anything from pepper spray to a taser, to a baton, or a combination of these. At that point, Lowe was said to have broken free again. He was later charged with battery on, law, on a law enforcement officer resisting uh, with violence, resisting without violence, <laughs> and a container of alcohol. Yeah, how can they oh, give him both of Oh, it was an open those? container. What yeah. a bunch of fucking bureaucratic, Seriously. just just soulless fucking faggots. Resisting, resisting with violence and without. Well, for a couple of minutes, he wasn't fighting back. And then the next <laughs> yeah. couple of minutes, he was fighting back. Yeah. Get him on both. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Drown in a sea of paperwork. So, Kudos okay, so that's, crowd, so that's what the whole thing was about, was an open container. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. fuck you. I can walk down the street and have my drink. I'm so fucking sick of this, dude. I'm going to kill a cop one day. <laughs> yeah, I, I am. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be doing something that doesn't hurt anyone, and I'm not going to feel like having my life ruined that day by some little fucking fat prick, you know. And I'm and I'm going to fucking blow his fucking head off. I swear to God, dude. Well, I, I don't care. I, I I really don't anymore. Come arrest me. I I don't give a shit. If if I have a gun and I get pulled over and I'm smoking weed, you're going to die. Sorry. And then I'll leave and I'll disappear and I won't do the show. I I'm just I can't do it anymore. This shit. Yeah, you're angry. I know. We've, this has been kind of a theme tonight. I can't. I just can't fucking stand this anymore. You can't have that drink. Really? 
Yeah. Pow. Um, <laughs> I didn't. No, I just can't. I cannot. I have zero tolerance did for the, police. Zero tolerance. Did this cop uh, sustain any real injuries, or is there a video of the crowd beating up on him? Because There's, I'd love to see that. Yeah, we have a video. Yeah, we do. Uh, hold on. There's nothing like seeing a cop getting his ass beat by a mob of people. You yeah, Dude, I don't have. I I don't know how to get the link to show up here. Oh, here I'll pull it up. So we do have the video. I just need. You know what sound. I'm saying though? Isn't it like a great release when you just see a cop getting his face kicked in by just random people? Yeah, like that. By? That video at the soccer field where they where some people run on the field to celebrate and mm-hmm. the, and like some cops just start beating him up. And yeah. uh, and like fifty thousand people just run on the field <laughs> yeah. to start stomping the shit out of the cops. Yeah. Like, it is such a satisfying feeling. I've had people try to like call me out on that as though I was wrong. Like, oh, you want to see someone ganged up on just because he's a cop? Like, yes, mm-hmm. yes, I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sure. They gang up on me <laughs> all there, the time. We saw a video here recently. It was in a in another country where cops were. It was in some country in Asia. In China. Was it China? Yeah. Yeah, and they had that. Uh, the cops beat the shit out of some woman, and uh, and they were like, nuh uh, and then they beat the shit out of those cops. Well, but it happens. It's defi- it, it seems like it's happening a- more and more. Apparently, yeah. it happened uh, in this same town a few weeks ago. Something similar happened. So they must just be fucking sick of their cops. Well, there's a total brain gasm thing that happens the second you see the back of their head getting stomped. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, though? It's like. A rush, and, it's like and you're just like, yeah. And they're wearing like riot gear, so you have to kick extra hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like when they're looking back at the at the sea of people running at them, and they look all scared and shit, and you're like, how does it feel, you fucking swine, a fucking faggot piece of shit? Yes, there you run go. for your <laughs> fucking life. Now baby. you got it. Now, now, <laughs> now, David Box is in the house. Here we go. Yeah. Um. Finally. So you know. <laughs> It is. It is just a great. It's it, and it's how you know that you're not wrong about feeling bullied by them is because it's just a visceral fucking gut reaction that you go hell yeah. It's like when you've been watching a douchebag in a movie and then he gets uppercutted into the pool and yeah. everybody's like yeah that's a fucking nobody has to discuss <laughs> why they you know what I mean. Yeah. It's just a it's just a a, a natural reaction. Mm-hmm. You Blackhawks fans. When, when like, the Blackhawks score a goal or mm-hmm. whatever the fuck happens, that's what it feels like. For us to see a cop get yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> it Definitely. feels real good. And there aren't enough videos of it. There really aren't. And I search for them. What do you got here? Uh, <laughs> this is our... West an attempted com. arrest of a suspect in Melbourne leads to a crowd allegedly surrounding and assaulting an surrounding. officer. The officer surrounding approached Phoenix Lowe officer. on New Haven Avenue late Saturday night. Police say Lowe resisted the officer and eventually pushed him to the ground. While the officer was wrestling with Lowe, police say a crowd of people surrounded the officer and started hitting him. He suffered some cuts and bruises during the scuffle. That's oh, it. There's, that's there's the no whole footage. video? Yeah. Great. Oh, there's no footage of it happening. <laughs> yeah, really. Cuts and bruises during the scuffle. Aww. Everything is put together so nicely tonight for us. That yeah, they're awesome. catching on. The The video would be too inspiring yeah. for others. We we'll, can't show that we'll on create, the television. Create copycats. People will start getting ideas. All right, what else? Uh, we have a community bands together for the most epic checkpoint refusal ever. Uh, this is in Arizona, where, uh, let's see, Arivaca, Arizona, uh, which is located in the militarized zone of the border region between the United States and Mexico. And they have crazy ass checkpoints all over the place. And people who live in the town are constantly being uh, asked for their papers and their ID. And they have to prove, even on their own property sometimes, that they are actually from that town and they live there. And they're legal and they're not... uh, migrating from somewhere else so they're sick of it and the government keeps pretending to hold hearings but then the whole town shows up and says fucking stop doing this stuff and they just don't stop doing it so they hold those hearings kind of like david Box was talking about the illinois tollway authorities they have the show the hearings are so the executives can play tetris on their phone while while people talking to a microphone about 
the Fuck atrocities. Text message oh, prostitutes yeah. and shit. Yeah, they're I, send, sending out dick pics. And, I, I yeah. worked one of those one of those hearings. Yeah. Uh, I ran sound for it as Remember? well. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Was, one guy, there's like one guy, one working class guy that goes up there and he's like, you know what, these toll roads were only supposed to be a part went until the roads were done and finished and now you're asking us for more money, why don't you just use your own money? And everyone's yeah. just dead silent. And I start to clap and then my, my supervisor stops me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a that was a ridiculous gig. Yeah. Um Well, anyway, these uh so called immigration and border patrol checkpoints uh, occur anywhere from twenty five miles to seventy five miles away from the border of Mexico. Uh thirty three are permanent in every way and uh seventy one kind of float around in the area. Trying to catch illegal immigrants, mm-hmm. and people in the town have even come forward and been like, "Look, when we have, when an immigrant is here and we know they're illegal, we help them. That's what we do. This is a community. Like we're not monsters. We don't fucking care if there are if they're immigrating here. It, we don't care. And they're like, you're harming our community because uh, you're deterring tourism mm-hmm. because you're yeah, so- choking the city out. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what they said. So. They're not putting up with it anymore. Um, so they're boycotting any areas that have the checkpoints. Uh, they're starting a massive resistance, they're calling it. Um, let's see. They are calling. They're doing a call-in campaign for their congressman, uh, letter writing, and then they're just going to the shit out of all these hearings, trying to get rid of these checkpoints. But I don't like their military checkpoints. So what can they really do? Well, and we've pretty we've covered on the show how it's you know yes it's unconstitutional, but they've written in the laws they need. They've got that orange zone thing going on where they yeah can, the orange yeah. zone they can come within 150 miles of the border at any point and and basically you don't have your constitutional rights you know on a highway yeah. like they've taken care of it. You don't have much room to fight back within the system anymore. They did this through the system. This isn't, you know right. what I mean? People go, this is illegal. Some of them are. When the police set up checkpoints, there's plenty of videos out there of people pulling up and going, no, fuck you. I'm going to keep going. And they have to let them keep going. Yeah. No, I will not pull over. Let me see your supervisor. Supervisor comes always. Uh, sir, uh, what's the problem here? I'd like to just keep going on my way. Can we see your driver's license? Am I under arrest? Am I being detained? And the supervisor's like, all right, whatever, go. You're yeah. one, of, one of these people. <laughs> um, so we've all seen that a hundred times, right? But, yeah, you know, as far as stuff like this goes with these military checkpoints, I think they've fucking, they've taken care of themselves in the written law. I don't think this is against the law. Yeah, and that... And I don't have no respect for the law. I'm just saying for people that want to play the game of of trying to catch them with the law, I don't think it's going to happen. Well, you may, they may be able to... Uh, find it unconstitutional. They may be able to fight it, it is, by calling it, it unconstitutional. Matter. There's well, all kinds of special fucking cases in that you know. There's all kinds of things that are technically unconstitutional, but are right, written but, in as like, for instance, drug laws. Um, well, what I mean is like, um, even though it's illegal to say I'm going to kill the president, it's not constitutional to convict somebody for that because of the First Amendment. Every, you know, that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. All right. That's all. That's the point. But I think but. they just they make stipulations right. that supersede the, the Constitution, so it really doesn't matter. Right. Like, the word constitutional doesn't even mean <coughs> legal or illegal now. It's just, like, a word that's, like, vaguely refers to the traditional document. It's, like, values. That's kind of what... It's an idea. Yeah. It's, and like, religion. A, it's, like, what religion thing. is now. Well... And a lot, I mean, a lot of people want like a, like a lot of people in the truth movement for for instance, like they want a total reset of the constitution. Let's do it with what we know now. Try again, you know? Yeah. Um, so some people really do believe in that original document word for word, you know, and they think it's a fucking genius thing, which it, it, I still say it was fucking great for its time. It got us a long, long way. But it's time to rethink the way we word things and the way we re- approach the idea of government so that this doesn't happen again if yeah. we ever make it out of this fucking nightmare. You know, I'm not somebody that says reset the Constitution. It's, you know, first of all, it worked for some of us. You know, 
it hasn't worked for a lot of segments of society. There's a lot of people who go, fuck the Constitution. You know, Constitution never cared about my people. You know, there's and they have a valid argument there. No, I don't, I don't need that. But, uh, you know. Yeah. It just depends. It's time to maybe rephrase. Right. Evolve. Yeah. It's a natural thing to do. Well, and I think the people that wrote the Constitution would agree. Yeah, definitely. Um, the race war is back. What race war? You know, the race war that we love so much. You know, all those races fighting. Uh, all right, we'll go ahead. <laughs> I'm uh, fucking tired and sick. Can just get, let's get this over with. Bahar Mustafa, who is a diversity officer at UK's Goldsmiths University has not been removed from her position even though she uh, <clears throat> tweeted that everyone should kill all the white men in the world. Yeah, <laughs> she's a really enlightened, progressive person. Um, what is she? Diversity officer? Diversity Goldsmiths officer. University diversity officer. Officer yes. Bahar Mustafa. Uh, she tweeted, kill all white men. And she's got a picture here. With uh, no white men and her like acting like, oh, like I'll shed a tear for you, like sarcastically. She seems yeah. like kind of a cunt, huh? Yeah, she yeah. sure does. You know, old white men, you know, thumbs down on the old white men. Young, but like young people aren't all terrible. Neither are old white people. It's all, you know, who gives a shit? <laughs> like, yeah. not all old people are r- rich and powerful and influencing Yo, well, society. There's right, plenty right, of right, right, salt right, yeah. of the earth old white people is that she, live but, their whole lives in a in a noble way, you know? Is she right. really saying no white men like every single one of them? Or is she referring to like the old, like the Rupert Murdochs? I don't know, but it doesn't matter because like nobody else is allowed to go, I hate black men. Well, what do you mean? You can't say that. No, I didn't mean like all black men. I just, <laughs> I, I just, I, yeah. I just meant the gangbangers. Like, what yeah. are you talking about? Yeah. Don't you understand when I say black people that I just mean criminals? <laughs> Don't you get that? Yeah. Nobody. I feel like you know, that's obvious. You're not. You're not allowed to do that. Yeah. So why should you be able? And I've heard this from plenty of fucking black people too. Well, when I say white people, it's not you know like you guys. It's fu- mm. Well, then don't fucking say it, because yeah. I am one. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, so, so find another fucking word. Say the establishment. Yeah. How about that? I say that all the time. That works. Yeah. Fucking figure it out, dude. The man. You don't get it. Rich you, people. You don't get yeah, to. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you don't get to <laughs> apply a double standard to everyone else because well, you want to be lazy with your language. Then you know? you're really going to like this because um, <clears throat> after she made this tweet and got some attention for also organizing only uh, black or minority ethnic women gatherings where no whites and especially no men were allowed for feminist reasons. Oh, fun. Yeah. She, uh, uh, Bahar Mustafa, read a statement defending herself, saying she could not be racist or sexist as she is an ethnic minority woman. Ah, it's impossible. I didn't know that. Okay. She says, I... Well, she's off the hook. An ethnic minority woman cannot be racist or sexist towards white men because racism and sexism describe structures of privilege Mm -hmm. based on race and gender, and therefore women of color and minority genders cannot be racist or sexist since we do not stand to benefit from such a system. Now, that might might sound crazy to a lot of people, but this is becoming a surprisingly popular view. Mm -hmm. You know, she's not the first person I've seen say something like that in all seriousness, too, you know? Yeah. To that's re- kind of redefine racism and sexism. That's kind of sad. It's, like, it is. It is sad. You're right. Because Sorry, no. it's it's giving <laughs> no. It's giving them giving anyone who says that a loophole to just perpetuate hate. That's all mm-hmm. it's doing. Well, and how about the like, fact that that race is kind of a made up thing in the first place, and people really blend skin tones very gradually all over the world as you fucking travel around, and it's kind of just like a pointless argument of like. Are you white, or how much of this are you, or is there some of this in you? And can it's like, why would you want to bicker based on race? I've never understood that. Mm-hmm. It's such a fucking immaterial thing. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, there are no black and white people. People are so fucking mixed up and crazily diverse. Every single one of us, almost. Why is this an argument? You know, I don't. I mean, whatever. I don't. Yeah. People, people can make the argument about if you're white, you enjoy benefits in culture. 
that you might not even realize, you know, and you, all right, fair enough. Yeah. That, that I can deal with, but I cannot deal with double standards in language. It drives me fucking nuts. Right. So while she'll get all kinds of support for this, some people will come out against her, but she'll get all kinds of support for this and people who not only support, but people who won't see that much wrong with it even just like, well, you know, she's kind of, you know, yeah. Um, but in general, there is just this fucking weird climate brewing of, hey, it's, you know, it's kind of cool to come out and say nazi shit like this. <laughs> like, this is some Nazi shit, you know? Yeah. And it's cool to say Nazi shit as long as you're in the minority and as long as you, you can claim you've been oppressed, which, like I've said on the show before, everyone of every color can make that claim somehow. Right. So, whatever. Um she it's like she she it is very much hitler like and it's of like just segregation and then it goes to like wiping out a species is what she's telling people to do right yeah and it sounds also, like islam yeah i know dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh we got it oh fuck we should also talk about that that uh that thing that happened to the islams this uh the this week, the guys that did that protest. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no? No. The, the, Muslim, <laughs> the Muhammad the, drawing contest. Oh, our, yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's also a, it's a matter of like... In any case, no matter what degree... Like somebody's... Uh, to, to what degree somebody is being unreasonable about the racial co- conversation... <laughs> I've noticed it's become really popular to say like... White people shouldn't have a say in this. Which is kind of a, a more mild version of what she's doing, but any if so, even if it's at the mild end like that, or at the extreme end like her, you can't exclude other people from your conversation and the and the the progress of society based on their skin color. I mean, that's that's regression. What you're supposed to hate that? <laughs> like <laughs> that's you know that's what people went through in this country of, of darker skin colors for a long, long time. So why, so is, is equality going to be revenge? You know, and I can understand that even too. A yeah. lot of people that I see talking shit about quote unquote white people or this and that, I would respect them more if they just said, look, I'm angry at white people and I want to be mean to them. Yeah. Uh, okay. Then now we got a conversation, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? But this shit is just fucking it's it's just it's it's a it's a really fucking childish kind of um playground but, taunting way to go like I can say what I like and you can't and the social climate is behind me and you can't speak your mind. If you do you know how many people probably think if I go like there's a double standard for white people and we cannot get away with saying nearly what most other people could say about us, th- they would think I was racist for saying that. Yeah, that's yeah. how of fucked up our culture is right now. Yeah, what is simple? I mean, what I just said to me is one plus one equals two. Right. Mm-hmm. It's let's treat clear. each other nicely. Yeah. Yeah. Racism. I'm not going to do it to you. <laughs> you don't do it to me. That's You're just racist. so far into oh, racism God. you can't even see it. Anymore. I can't even You're understand. So blind. But again, I wish they would be honest and say, look. You deserve to be treated bad, and I'm gonna do it to you because I'm mad. Yeah. Because I've seen to uh, fine. Like I like I said again. But that would be fine. That I, I could. <laughs> but you're deal, not I would worth understand it. that. You're you not know? worth like, the truth because you're white scum. That's like, the. Did other- you think the slave driver took the time to explain it to his <laughs> fucking dudes? You don't know. No. Like right. they're just gonna let you fall behind and fuck you. You're not worth their breath. Mm-hmm. Is what I imagine. Well, and most of these people <laughs> have that. Most of these people, if you if you engage, like what I've been doing all week, like I was talking earlier online, just fucking fighting with people and telling them they're retards. Like, you know, I was told this black guy, like, you're a fucking cunt, retard, piece of shit, racist. You know, and just saying shit like that, like, oh, yeah, white man calling somebody racist. That's a la-. Like, the, all they'll have is responses like that. They'll just have, like, their little... Your black guy little voice arrogant, is pretty racist. Little thing. arrogant. I didn't yeah. even do a black guy voice. <laughs> little, little arrogant fucking, you know, trying to be cute and, and, and oh, you wouldn't understand. Oh, why should, you know, yeah. SMH. <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> SMH. Yeah, it's, just, it's just fucking redi- Like, yeah, whatever. You guys know. Yeah. yeah. Fucking commenters. Yeah. No, it's retarded. Um. What really sucks is that we have nothing to do with, like, slavery and all that shit that was going on. But a lot of black people today, would you say that 
are less fortunate because their ancestors come from a super unfortunate situation sure. yeah, yeah so like they're still in a way living and dealing with the effects of what oh, that's what i'm saying did. that that argument's fair yeah yeah. but at the yeah. same time no one can blame us because you're in a, or you you're know born my, where you're born and you do the best you can yeah yeah and and also we are the generation that for our entire lives has really worked hard to like be more fair socially than things were you know like everyone i know since i've been in early grade school has been fucking anti-racism and anti-bigotry in every way yeah so i've never known any people that were fucking you know we were the generation that's that did that that actually you know yeah. now look where it's gone it's gone fucking way overboard <laughs> but like it's, that's what i'm saying it's just it's just not it's just really not fair though because like we are the generation that made the fucking effort None yeah. of us fucking said nigger till we were 22, probably. No. Yeah. No way. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, no, I had to really loosen up to be able to say that word. I'd never say yeah. that when I was... Even just yeah. to discuss it. Mm-mm. Or or in some kind of fucked up joke once in a while. I'm not yeah. gonna... You know what I mean? Not like we sit around and tell actual redneck racist jokes. I just mean when you're fucking being hilarious once in a while. Yeah. Any word might come up. We but, went uh, through a phase in high school where our exclamation was nigga be for real. And it was just like whatever we if we were surprised about anything. You got slushies? Nigga be for real. And that was I mean that was probably a solid year and a half, but we never put an R on it. I think that was the difference. Whatever. The point is <laughs> the point is we were the generation that made the fucking effort. Yeah. You yeah. know. Now we're getting shit on. If we said yeah. every for every misstep, if we said the word, it was just for the shock factor and to be. That's funny. what I mean. Yeah. Once in a while, there's a place for everything comedically. I don't care if you want to be offended, be offended, you fucking pussies. But there's a place for every offensive word in a joke somewhere, and yes. it doesn't have to be some like I said, some ignorant redneck joke. But there's a fucking comedic timing is what it is. Sometimes things are fucking hilarious. Agreed. You're only saying that because you're white. I know. Whitey. <laughs> I know. Sorry. That was bad. Um, I'm smart. <clears throat> let's do our updates. Ooh. We got some updates. All right. We got a update in Waco, Texas. Um, there is a massive biker protest being organized. Yeah, the biker gangs, blah, blah, blah. We all know about it. Uh, what's happening? Uh, well, they have organized a protest for the um, 174 people who are in jail right now being held at $1 million each bond, as, yeah, as we know. Most of them must be innocent. <laughs> yeah. Like, all of the nine people were killed and witnesses said the cops shot them all. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so I don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, um, they are putting together a massive protest to try and get these peaceful peaceful people out of there uh it's planned for the coming week so we'll have to see how large it gets all right but so shitloads so anyway, of bikers are going down there shit for loads a of biker, yeah they're gonna That'll be some good video it's gonna be like a new occupy it's movement. gonna be real loud bikers occupy so so that's that and then we have a <laughs> duggar update <laughs> for the josh duggar molestation scandal um the trooper okay so as we'll recall Josh Duggar admitted to his father, uh, a member of his church and a member of the police force, what he had been doing. And the state right. trooper uh, had a stern talk with him, so he said. Um, and now uh, some people have been looking into the state trooper, Arkansas state trooper, and they have found that <laughs> uh, online profiles of him listing things such as preschools and puberty as some of his interests. <laughs> what, what kind of profiles? <laughs> um, <clears throat> and what kind of pedophile is into preschools and puberty? That's yeah, fucking puberty. That's pretty broad. Puberty is like a big drag for a pedophile. That's like you, you hate puberty when you're a pedophile. Yeah, it's his uh, Yahoo profile. Um, username was Dad's Love 2002. Nice. Uh, listed such interests <laughs> as kinky kids. Which I looked up, and it's like a boy-girl singing kid duo child superstar thing from Japan or Korea. Are you sure um, you didn't just mean kinky kids? No, because it's spelled <laughs> K-I-N-K-I. Okay. Oh. Um, and both words are capitalized. Um, but also probably, I mean, 
it's there. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Child play series, Strangers with Candy, Puberty, Preschools. Um, He's always going to jail for 56 years, this guy. Yeah. He also spent six years spent considerable time on his Dude, computer viewing. We got to go back porn. to that episode because before this came out, remember I said this cop was a child molester. Uh huh. I fucking called this yeah. from a yeah. mile away, dude. Yeah, I remember. We'll I, I, I was like, "There's no way he's participating in this unless the dad's like, look, I got to deal with this." You know what I mean? We're all in this together. I know you're into this shit too, buddy. Yeah. So you know yeah. that was your prediction, dude. That was I was exactly right. Yeah. yeah I was. A, Wait, was he, was the cop molesting know, kids, or is he I just into po- it? Police. Sorry. He was. Well, he was into it for sure. That's all we know for sure. And, he was and probably for making sure money on. We can speculate all we want. He was probably taking pictures of the Duggar kids. Right. That was the. That's that what was I'm saying. The idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They had a, a little the, thing. That's going. how the dad knows to go to this guy because he he goes look. We molested that kid. Now he's fucked up. He's doing it, right? Wasn't that the situation? Right. Now we got to fucking deal with this because he wants to speak out and turn himself in. We yeah. can't open this fucking this do- yeah. this doorway, you know? So I have a feeling we're going to be learning more and more about this. Dude. I really hope we do. Bunch of fucked up people. And this is yeah. the guy that, that would, would, would say that his family was like the epitome of Christian values and stuff. Right, yeah. I that was their is. whole they, thing. Christians really do seem to like to molest each other. Oh, and also somebody <laughs> found some old footage of Jim Bob Duggar saying that uh, any any person who molests a child should be sentenced to death. Mm. That yeah, you, you gotta say those, that if you're a pedophile. Those people should die. Yeah. So. When you're a pedophile, you have to be so anti-pedophile. <laughs> yeah. He like, said that way have, too much. Yeah. Like, yeah. Suspiciously too. Like, much. all right, Jim Bob, He's we just get it. Stomping around in the front yard. I uh, hate fucking pedophiles. I mean it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Does everyone hear me? Turns out you're a pedophile. Yeah. God damn it. Are you a pedophile? I'm. I'm not. Oh. I don't think so. A pederass. Eight-year-olds, dude. <laughs> Yeah, eight year olds. Primo. All right, can we can we talk about Annie Dukin? Does anybody want to talk about this bitch? Annie Dukin. This fucking twat. This fucking bitch should have a live alligator stuck up her cunt. <laughs> <laughs> like a <laughs> like a full size one. <laughs> and it just starts <laughs> rolling around and tearing it up. No, like a fucking teenage alligator that you can really get the head in there, but then you get the arms in too. You get tired now. He's still gonna walk the, long and you lean. Get, you get the arms in so he can't yeah. get out, so he has to eat his way through. And he has all that like repressed angst. Yeah. He's yeah. about to let out. <laughs> yeah. It's the quickest <laughs> he hysterectomy needs an ever. Ugh. Ooh, I didn't like that. Yeah, um, there you go. Well, here's what this bitch did. Uh, she mishandled and forged drug results, leading to incarcer- incarceration for tens of thousands of people. She did this over the course of 14 years. Yeah, she should be killed. She should be killed. She should be fucking killed. I'm not kidding. Uh, we- There's no, I mean, how many people? Uh, tens of tens thousands. Tens of thousands. Yeah, they're still jail. putting all. They're still putting all of because the she's data forging together. results for drug tests. For what right. reason is she forging these results? Because I'll That's tell you why. Question. And it doesn't say this anywhere, but this is another thing I'm calling right now, and I know I'm right. She's being paid by someone who has an interest in a run for profit prison. You know, and yeah, and yeah. she handles yeah. all those cases, and he goes, any case that starts with four three two three, you you make sure. That that comes back negative, and you get a nice little fucking envelope, you know, Positive, every every, every every six months. Yeah. Someone's um, life is ruined in the process, right? That's what I'm thinking. And you know, it wouldn't take much either for the right person, the right fucking dirtbag who needs, who maybe they find, you know, who knows? Maybe they find out she's got some fucking financial problems, and they go, yeah. "Look, we'll give you an extra thirty grand every six months. You take care of this shit for us." Or and they're making millions. She's being off the mailed. labor. They fucking, you know, because you know yeah. how this shit works, right? Yeah. right? They get people put in prison. They fucking. They they have them do labor for big corporations uh, for twenty cents an hour, but they invoice eight bucks an hour or whatever. You know what I mean? Right. And and that they make shit loads of money. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's the new age slavery. Exactly. So this is a run and for. She, uh, I'm telling you, this is a run for profit prison payoff thing. She I guarantee you. Not only tampered with test results, but she also forged documents and. T- uh, wantonly testified falsely in criminal cases. So she would actually get on the stand and verbally lie 
to a room full of people in a court. Damn. Which is pretty, I mean, it's just so shitty to do all of those things. It was very deliberate, and the only reason to do it is you're getting paid. Right. There's no... Why would you do that just for yourself? It's you not, wouldn't. Yeah, it's not like a serial killer thing. It's not like a fucking, ooh, I'm putting people in jail just because, or whatever. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're getting, I feel so high. You know, there's, there's no rush from that. You're getting paid <laughs> yeah. off. No, it's, yeah. all, it's all money. It's all getting more. It's capitalism. You're getting paid. Yeah. That's the only re- that's the only thing. Yeah. So um so she pled guilty in 2013 to 27 counts including perjury, obstruction of justice and tampering with evidence. She was sentenced to 3 to 5 years in prison. What? Damn. 3 to 5 years. That's you it. cunt. And then she received an additional 2 years of probation. Um, let's but, kill it. Let's kill her. I'll, yeah. I'll. This is how I'll go out. I'm gonna kill this fucking bitch. Let's yeah. lynch her am kids I, for smoking weed. Am I allowed to say I'm gonna kill people on the show? I've been doing it since the I first know. episode, I but don't, I don't know. Well, uh, dude, I, I'm gonna kill a cop and I'm gonna kill this fucking bitch. <laughs> I don't give a shit anymore. And this is the first show that I haven't drank in months, and this is how yeah. I'm talking. But boy, uh, you know, honestly, dude, it's it's. About as infuriating, infuri- infuriating as anything can possibly fucking be. With how many people she was caused to incarcerate, that's like getting off insanely light. And yeah. she's yeah. probably, and she's probably not, not even going to a bad prison either. No, she'll go to one of those weekend prisons. Yeah, it'll be yeah. a resort. They, they have a tennis court. Yeah. yeah. The, and so, sauna. Uh, the people that were falsely bitch. incarcerated, are they being freed? Well, um, they can apply. They're, yeah. Oh, oh my oh, God. God. Drown Listen, in a sea of first, bureaucracy. First, after, after it takes you two or three weeks to get the fucking attention of someone from your cell who will do anything for you after you complain enough to get somebody to bring you the right form, then you'll get that. It'll be filed six months later. You'll get a response about some bullshit that you didn't finish your fucking thing you're supposed to do your, your jail job thing so then after you finish that you'll be allowed to fucking do this oh plus you've had uh some bad behavior and this and that imagine you know what i mean yeah. they're not gonna fucking just Jesus be let out Christ. um they're gonna they're gonna drag every one of these through that bureaucratic fucking hell for as long as they can well some of the prisoners are uh worried to even apply for to have their because cases dropped criminals because know what this be- is Sorry. They could be retried for other charges that they had at the time. Okay. But also criminals know what this is, and mm-hmm. a lot of them are gonna go, Huh, this is a this is a sticky situation because clearly they know that this bitch is being paid off by somebody very powerful. Mm-hmm. You know, and they might wanna lay low, you know, right. and go, I don't I don't wanna be in the media getting out based on this and, you know, then have the fucking cops Come and watching and, me for and something else. Plant and, something crazy yeah. on me or fucking kill me or whatever, yeah. you know. Um So uh as of right now, the effect of Dukin's misconduct is estimated at forty thousand cases. Forty thousand people. Forty thousand. Wow. That was like her only job to forge <laughs> urine samples. Yeah. yeah. How did she do it? How did, did she, she get, get away with 100% positive results on every single drug test no, she ever... that's what I'm saying. Somebody goes... Because she's not only doing cases that are going to send people to prison. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. There's some code, there's some way of her knowing, and they go, look, any of this type of test, this is what we need you to do. Yeah. And here's how much you're going to get. And shut up. And if you get caught, you better do your fucking time. And and you'll keep your money, and you know what I mean. Like you don't say yeah. shit about this. We'll fucking kill you. Yeah, someone should. No, I'm telling you. I'm sure because if she's not going to speak up about it, I'm sure she's been fucking threatened into silence. <laughs> if we were on the regular radio, we'd be sued every day. <laughs> we just wildly yeah. speculate on yeah. everything, say we're going to kill people. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> this, but this is what I'm saying. She's been fucking told. Look. Probably from the beginning, hey, if you ever get popped, like a fucking high-level drug dealer, if you get popped, don't fucking say shit. We'll take care of you when mm-hmm. you get out. You're going to have to do a couple yeah. years. When you get out, it'll be fine. Yeah. We'll get you something. You'll be good. You know? I guarantee you that's what's happening. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Is How any- much money do you make off 40,000 motherfuckers working eight, uh, 40 hours a week for God knows how long, you know, and, and whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. A uh, lot. Like, 
Has anyone who's prosecuting her inquired about her incentive to do this kind of thing? Has anyone asked her, like, who made her do it? Is that a thing that we could read about? Um, not that we could find. I mean, yeah. not that I could find at least. So she just she just did. I it. I think it's just spinning it that she just did it. Yeah, yeah. She that's what the, that's how the article seems. That's when fucked we, up. Right. Plus, the prosecutor Negative. is a cocksucker too. They they're part of the same fucking thing. They actually believe that what they're doing is right, and and they don't want to cause trouble for the prison system. Right. You know. Yeah, because then who knows what could happen. Because they suck a lot of fucking dicks. Yeah, they all suck a bunch of dicks. I want every prosecutor and every judge in the whole world to die. Yeah. I hate them worse than police even. Those fucking pudgy, pale, little cheap suit-wearing faggots that waddle back and forth in courtrooms. Yeah, uh, the defendant here was involved in a battery case in 2009 and was arrested for marijuana in 2007, and we're going to recommend six months. You know, I hate them even worse than the cops. Yeah. At least the cops are out there fucking like gangsters. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? At least the cops are gangsters. At least I'll give them that. Yeah. Little They'll get their hands faggots dirty. in the courtroom. Get their hands dirty. Oh, God, I hate every the white fucking lovers. one of those pieces of shit. <laughs> Especially the judges. When I'm at court, dude, every time I'm in court, I stare at the prosecutor creepily. I, I, I want him dead so bad that I just fucking stare at him like Hannibal Lecter, and they never look at you. But I know they feel me looking at them. Yeah. And the judge has never said anything, and neither has my lawyer ever. But every time I'm anywhere near the prosecutor, <laughs> I'm just fucking... <laughs> <laughs> You know, but yeah. like a little more subtle, but very like if he looked at me, he would see me. Just, he would know. Just, just burning fucking holes in the side of his face. Just you piece of fucking shit. What I would do to you if I could catch you at a fucking bar. Holy shit. Yeah. Holy shit. Keep a ski mask in my trunk for a reason, just faggot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll see one day. Ugh. I don't know. There's always this one that I see. Whenever I'm there, and it's just this younger guy, always has this fucking smug smirk on his face, and it's like, no one's happy to be there, and it just makes me more pissed off that he's smiling. Oh, they're just waddling, and yeah. and, and and exchanging niceties with the fucking fat girls that work there too. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> hey, Don, yeah. how you doing? Uh, they're, they're all, and they're every one of them is the Richard Pryor white guy too. Yeah. <laughs> well, hello there, Steve. How are you? <laughs> Did you have a good holiday? What do you got? Some 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 niggers to lock up. Let's do it. Oh boy. Um. You just love court. <coughs> this guy's Mexican and it needs a translator. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well. <clears throat> why uh why do you guys think everybody thinks we need to thank our military for freedom? Does that makes sense to anybody? Cuz they protect us from the terrorists. I think it's a I think it's a thing that made sense at some like point. Like one time and it just got to be brain Yeah, I just got to be a fucking I don't even know how to word this cuz this is a really sensitive thing to a lot of people. Yeah. If you've had family members or friends that have died in the military, you will probably not want to ever believe that they they were doing something less than noble, you know? Right. Yeah. And you'll probably not ever want to confront yourself with the fact that, like, they were sent there for, for corporate and political interests and not for your freedom. Mm-hmm. Right. A lot of us understand that intuitively, you know? But it's a sensitive one. I don't know. Yeah. It's a it's a rough one for a, for a lot of people. And just how much I want to kill a prosecutor, there's so many people that if they heard me say stuff like this, would want to kill me exactly that much. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So a lot of those. It's, it's a rough one. But as much as I feel for you guys that fell for this thing where you thought the – military was going around doing noble work i i don't know that how much i you know i don't know how much credibility i can give any of that or or how much i can really fucking entertain that idea at all anymore you know yeah i I think it's i mean as hard as it would be for people to admit it it's letting your emotions get in the way of reason that's it's just reason that's all it's just you're not working for us 
You know, the, we're not in control of our government. The people that are ordering you overseas to kill they have nothing to do with us. Mm-hmm. It's very much disconnected. Yeah, now, like everyone and knows I, that. Deep here's down too. Yeah, but they'll make other. You know, if we don't go there, they'll get us here. If we don't keep fucking creating more terrorists constantly by having an invasive presence in other countries, well, then there might be terrorists. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's just a bunch Capiche? of it's just a bunch of bullshit. But yeah. it, there are ways that people justify it for themselves, or hey, even as simple as hey, I don't ask questions. Yeah, I do what I'm told, and and it's for the country, and mm-hmm. that's what I believe. Forgotten country, but that has there's no logic in that, right? Whatsoever yeah. anymore, I don't think. It's, now, the Revolutionary War was pretty rad. Yeah, that was totally rad. But that Good was for them. not a real military. That was just everybody just fucking up some some limeys. I'd be fine with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. You know what I mean? And just banding together and do that. That was that was pretty kick ass. Yeah. yeah. That was kick ass. But I mean, then people go, What about World War Two? They saved the world. Okay. Okay. All right. Hmm. Now let's consider this. The same government that sent you know, that, that that ordered them to go over to do what nobody can really argue like it's bad to try to kill Hitler, I guess. But you know, the same government that ordered them over to do that was full of people that funded Hitler to power. So even World War II, I'm like, yeah, great, but you're still pawns in a game you don't understand. You yeah. know, you're still you were still used for for war profiteering. It yeah. doesn't that wasn't any different. Yeah, there's still something bigger that's dictating right. what's happening. Right. Um even though <laughs> I guess, you know, we did get attacked, but now, if you really look into that, you'll find that we could have stopped that attack too, but we wanted yeah. it to happen to get into the war. Right. So, sound familiar? As it always is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so even World War II, where you go, wow, it really was like they were saving the world, even they were just being used. That's all, you know? Yeah. It goes, I mean, it. What do you think about that? Do you think World War II counts? Do you think the Revolutionary they, War they, was the only cool war? Yeah, that's all I'm down <laughs> with, really. Um, wor- world War Two, though, are you guys, what do you think, heroes? No? I like to yeah. think World War Two was like the start of our downfall. That's because that's when we became a superpower. Yeah. And originally we weren't going to meddle with that until Pearl Harbor happened. But until there's they also, let Pearl Harbor happen. Until they happen. let Pearl Harbor happen. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if that's gave us the excuse to jump into something, become the heroes, and then become the big bad bullies of the world, then... Yeah. The moral yeah. authorities of everyone else. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. It's it's hard. I don't even want to say it, but it's like, I, I don't really innately respect people who fought in World War II anymore. I just... No. I see it as so much of a broader thing. I just see them as fucking dummies. Well, kinda. it was I, a that different didn't time, see what was though. Going on. It was, obviously, they didn't... Okay, that's unfair for me to say because they yeah. didn't have access to information like we do. Yeah. But really, yeah, no. And I guess just for the bravery and the fact that they thought they were doing something really mm-hmm. noble, I guess they, they do deserve credit for that. Yeah. I think it's different when I think about the military today because I feel like you have you have no excuse for for believing that this government is going to order you to do something with moral purposes yeah at heart yeah, you know if, like well and here's the other thing to remember about World War II is just because it may have been used as a manipulation to people in the United States uh doesn't mean that there weren't actually bad guys well, but you know, there they are made actually, a but show see, out of it. There's bad guys in the Middle East. I don't right. know. Right I don't now. know. That right. Hitler fella, he's Hitler quite was, a guy. I mean, <laughs> he was quite a no, painter. But it doesn't matter how he bad. He loved dogs. See, it doesn't matter how bad the enemy is. Should we be over there? Right. Really? And, wh- and not even should we. Why are we actually over there? Yeah. Are we really over there because we give a fuck about, you know some little some little brown people running around in their villages we've never given a shit about little brown people running around in their villages ever before yeah but you know when there's money to be made all of a sudden we do so <coughs> no there's bad guys over there <coughs> taliban is horrible 
you know, um, a lot of the fucking governments and people that have been in power over there have been horrible. Yeah. And here, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, but it's that's the thing is like we're not over there because of that, right? So if you're in in the military, you 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 gotta wake up and realize like you're not you're not fighting the good fight anymore. Yeah. It's not that's not the way it no, is. No, I think it's been a long time. Yeah, if you really want to support people who are willing to die for the country and for liberty and stuff, educate them and urge them not to join the military yeah. <laughs> and to find a different avenue for, yeah. for doing that shit. It would be pretty great to have uh, a lot of like young, dedicated, able-bodied people to like you know work on the country a little. Yeah, you know, and get things together. <laughs> We're not doing that good really right now. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like feeding all these fucking people into this well, you slaughter. Well, re- you realize most of the people that do this is because they want money to go to college. That, they're, that they're, is a sad truth, isn't it? It is. That, and <laughs> it's a lot of people. Well, and it's a lot of people who have been made to feel by the pressures in society that you have no hope of a good life if you don't go to college. You can't get by on your own fucking wit and, and talents or whatever you might have. You're going to have to get into some structured organization that will hand you a piece of paper to certify you to have a nice life. You know, that's really what the biggest problem. Good is luck with homelessness. Convinced of that <laughs> well, life. Once you're done. <laughs> good, good, luck, good luck with one-legged homelessness. I hear that's nice yeah. this yeah, time of year. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, fuck off. You suck. And that's the other thing. How whatever. How how are they not looking around and seeing how veterans are treated and going, Well, fuck that. I'm not gonna get involved in this, dude. Seriously. Look look at the guys coming back, how fucked up so many people are that can't get their fucking benefits, are getting turned down, or you can only do this, you have to go to this doctor and you know, um ending up like you said, <laughs> ending up homeless and shit. Yeah. How are you as a young kid? With access to all the information that you have access to, looking around going, yeah, I want to get involved in this. Because maybe you really just want to get behind a gun and shoot some people that are different from you. Maybe that could it, be part of it. I mean, for a lot of people, maybe it really only goes that far. Like, I'm fucking born to kill. They're, they have food for me and a place to sleep, right? And I'm going to go kick some ass. No, there are also people that... I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Um, there are also people that do want to go around the world and see the world. Like, yeah. while also paying for college, you know, that whole thing. Most yeah. but, most people who are in the military and are in active combat um, actually don't shoot to kill. They just shoot to shoot. Most They did a study where um, most people involved on the front lines aren't actually shooting at the enemy to kill them. They're shooting at them so that they look like they're shooting at them. Mm-hmm. It's most people who join the military aren't right for the job aren't programmed to kill or uh, or uh, aggress in a, a large-scale battle like that or, you know, hand-to-hand stuff, on-the-ground stuff. There's more bombing now since they did yeah. that, so I guess uh, it's a little more anonymous and it's probably more effective, but most people who join the Army or the military aren't killers, and it means that they're joining for the wrong reasons because if you're going to be in the military, you should be a killer, right? Well, Marines, yeah. I would say. Marines, definitely. Yeah, whatever. Anyways, let's stay on topic here, though. <laughs> yeah, depends on how you define military, I guess. <sighs> I, what, you wanted to go through this article, five reasons it doesn't make sense to say we owe our freedom to the military. Yeah, it kind of, I mean, this is not a, we kind of covered a lot of stuff, actually. Um, one thing I did want to point out was that most founders of this country warned against a standing army, which I think is kind of interesting, because those were the guys who were fighting as civilians in the Revolutionary War, mm-hmm. and then they said, don't create a standing army. This author of this article um Let's see, coming from the right, I've seen pretty much everyone who worships the military also complain about big government and correctly complain that we can't trust a single politician. Do they realize that it's the politicians who send the troops off to war? Yeah. So there's... Why do you think I am so done yeah. with these fucking idiots? <laughs> That's just exactly the kind of the kind of obvious fucking realization that 90% of people can't fucking come to. Right. Yeah, and it doesn't... I'm just done with there's everybody. There's just such a disconnect, it seems like. Fucking idiots. Um, but this author is just kind of making points about how we've propagandized, you know, people join the military because they've been brainwashed to think they're doing a noble thing, and the truth is that they're not. Yeah. And they're not ever well, Why do you think so many of them kill doing, themselves? 
Yeah, it's a lot. Why do you think so many? Seriously, come yeah. on. Yeah. Is it shell shock? Is it fucking... No, it's probably you can't live with the things you've fucking done. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's probably... Like we were talking about earlier, you're not really a full human being until you are getting close to 30, and you look back at when you were 19 and stuff, and you're like, oh my god, that yeah. was ridiculous. You get into your These- late 20s, and you start remembering all the fucking kids you've killed. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm... Uh, Wow. Kill myself. I yeah, suck. Get out of here. Bad. Yeah, <laughs> I'm right. a tool. Um, pretty bad. It, it is. Yeah, I mean, they, they kill themselves at alarming rates. Yeah, uh, well, and furthermore, I mean, do you think it's an accident that there's not a good safety net set up for them when they come back? No. You, I mean, it's Probably that, not. Yeah. Um, And I have a hard time believing it's all about money either. Mm-hmm. The way that our government spends money, you know. This is the the stuff with the troops seems like it must be deliberate in a way. Yeah. And we were, you know, we were all there at the NATO summit in Chicago when those ex-military members gave their medals back and yeah. talked about how they couldn't couldn't live with the things that they'd done and they could never undo them and Right. And they were throwing their medals back at where they were having the meeting, yeah. the uh, summit meeting. Yeah. That was pretty sweet. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. But you know how many people feel that way and can't cope with it? Because I'm sure it's most of the people. Well, and those were, those were the guys that, like, as cool as that was, those were the guys that wanted to do that in front of a giant crowd and couldn't just do that for themselves. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, those are kind of like the showmen of, yeah. that, of that whole side <laughs> of, of that things. movement, yeah. Yeah, those are probably all people that have fucking podcasts and shit, you know? Right. Yeah. Like, At the same um, time, though, I think it's good to to like show that you're doing that and get it get it like out there and yeah no i yeah, encourage other symbolism. people to do it you know it might it was not definitely just cool. be showmanship it created a moment it's something that i will probably remember always as a detail about that day you yeah know? It, was, it was cool but yeah so i don't know i don't the more i think about it the more i think that maybe it's on purpose that there's no support set up for veterans who return home from doing horrific things and and that maybe they're just letting the problem solve itself over time, you know? Well, yeah. And another thing is, like, let's keep these people oppressed so they don't gain a big voice in society and speak right. out on what, what's been going on. The fewer know? of um, them that are around, the better it is for us. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and the shittier their circumstances are. Right. They get, you know, because don't forget, that's the way oppression works. It's not always direct. It's it's everything. It's let's keep them unhealthy so they don't have time and they can't think straight and and blah blah. blah. You know what I mean? It's just a big fucking web of ways to oppress people. It's yeah. not. A, it doesn't always have to be direct. You know what I mean? It's like that's mm-hmm. that could be the motive of keeping them unhealthy is then they won't be able to have time to fucking get together any actual organized movement that goes anywhere. You know? Right. Yeah, I'm with you on that. So. <clears throat> So anyway, that's why we don't thank our troops for protecting our freedom. And then this article also says, well, and these are all, yeah, we kind of got into this article where they're saying, you know, reasons that it's bad for society, basically, for us all to keep repeating, well, we got to thank the troops for our freedom. Yeah. Um, Because we don't. And as we've said many times before, they've all had the same access to all the things we've had access to. So what freedom, anyways? What the fuck are you talking about? No, no, it's just, it's all the illusion. It's just all the show. That's all it is. What freedom? This country sucks. Stars and stripes, rock, flag, and eagle. This fucking country blows, dude. You know how many people I've talked to online that are just, like, amazed at what we put up with here? You know, like, how can you... And people talk, like... Well, what about the social mobility and the fucking, you can walk around anywhere you like to walk around and nobody kills you. And what about, you know, just like all this <laughs> bullshit. Like, yeah, that's almost every country. The yeah. illusion that we're so ridiculously free is fucking insulting at this point. Yeah. We have the internet, motherfuckers. We can yeah. see. We, we can know s- what you're doing. We can see what's going on in other countries. And we can see that we're not that fucking unique, really, as yeah. far as day-to-day life goes. Almost every country pretty much looks the fucking same at this point. Yeah. Whenever you see videos, it takes you a second to figure, all right, where's this? Looks almost the same as where I live. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The, all right. Cars are a little different. Guys' pants are weird. Russia. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? But it's like, what is this supposed to be? What are we supposed to be so impressed by? What is right. this freedom we're supposed to be so fucking impressed by? Yeah. 
every country says that to their people. We are so we're the best. We are so oppressed. We're the freest. Uh, oppressed by fucking laws, needless laws in this country. Don't talk to me about free. Fuck you. I'm one of the only free people I know, and I'm gonna fucking be killed by a cop or kill one. Yeah, that's what being free is. Well. You signed up for this when you got born here. Right. And you know that. <laughs> when I got my social security number. Yeah. <laughs> my straw man fucking identity. Yeah. For the government to control me. The corporate entity of the United States through maritime, uh, what is it called? Fucking uh, uh, admiralty. Oh, yeah. Uh, maritime admiralty law. Yeah. Going back, whatever. We learned about this whole thing. Yeah, you know, the standard <sighs> stuff. I yeah. thought Dennis was going to come and talk about that. Did he ever come around? Oh, no. We still have to follow up on that. The straw man conspiracy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, whatever. I'm just done. I'm done. I'm not thanking them for my freedom that I don't fucking have. Thanks a lot for leaving the country to go to shit so you can go kill brown people for no reason. That's awesome. USA. Well, it wasn't yeah. no USA. reason. No, I know. They're getting a lot of fucking precious metals. Opium. And, and oil and contracts for paving. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. Thanks, guys. And, yeah. Hey, let's throw what a, a time to be alive. Let's throw a parade for the paid murderers that don't even fucking give a shit about the reasons they're they're murdering. The, you know how many military yeah. guys will just go, "Hey, I don't get into that. I just follow my. I just yeah. kill people for money. Yeah, that's what I. That's well, I'm come just on. Following orders, man. You owe me. <laughs> hey, yeah. nine nine eleven. Nine eleven. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, are I, you a firefighter? <laughs> that's another thing firefighters haven't done shit in 10 years yeah in 14 get it together. years what the fuck are you guys doing we go fucking you know get get your get your shit together stop sitting around in your stations stuffing your faces talking shit to fucking pizza delivery guys like me because you're a bunch of fucking <laughs> jock asshole exactly like cops but for some reason can't be cops so yeah. you become firemen they fuck have you the same haircut Firemen, military, police. Who else have we shit on tonight? What, we, what else should we shit on? Uh, Christina Flake. Yeah. Thanks a lot for our guest who never fucking called in or got or even returned the messages, you fucking asshole. Maybe something serious happened. I know. I'll feel really bad. If she's <laughs> Maybe she's possessed um, by a demon. She could be. Um, also, Annie Dukin. Bitch. Fucking chemist bitch. Oh. The one that... That, Faking everybody out. Yeah, you gotta explain that a little more. I'm trying to do something here. You're well, we talked lady. about it already. Andy Dukin. Just the people we're shitting on tonight. We're angry tonight. Yeah. Here, look. I'm gonna play a video from Christina Rake. Give me my audio cable back. Oh. I'm gonna play a video from Christina Rake's Facebook page. So right. we can this see is our uh, demonologist lady. Yeah. Yeah, who blew us off. Blew us off. You know... She we're doing everything we can do. Me. We're yeah, we're doing everything we can fucking do to try to be a part of this community where everyone's a fucking weirdo antisocial nerd and doesn't return messages and flakes out on shit. Yeah. And we're doing the best we can. We schedule you a fucking week and a half ago, whatever. And you just blow us off. Here, let's let's watch her video. Hold on. Hello my friends. I'm Deacon Christina Rake of the United States Old Catholic Church. And I'm also director of the Paranormal Clergy. You know, I get asked fairly often, what was your first encounter with the demonic? Well, I... Look at Zach Morris and Chunk from Goonies <laughs> had a baby. <laughs> She's way too peppy to have ever encountered a fucking demon. Yeah, and she just... Oh my God. She seems like a liar, you know? That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, she talks with, like, does those hand motions like a politician and has that, yeah. like, obviously, like... Uh, really, like, um, I don't know, like, she's like, ah, fuck, how would I say it? She's, she's putting on airs, you know? Yeah. She's got this, like, very calculated way of speaking that's just not genuine, it doesn't seem like. Also, she's dressed like a liar. Yeah, like a Catholic. Yeah. yeah. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, she looks like a priest. Yeah. What is that stupid fucking white... God, you God, guys are, just you're so everything. you're so spiritual enlightened and and enlightened that you think you need to wear certain clothes. Yeah. Like that's like that's a big fucking thing, you know, that you have to have these certain clothes on. 
Yeah, or else that's it how, doesn't count. That's how fucking, that's how high up and enlightened you are. That's so impressive, you fucking dogmatic asshole. Here, yeah. let's, should we listen to it? Yeah. Hello, my friends. I'm Deacon Christina Rake of the United States Old Cat. God won't like me in regular clothes. No, and I also this, I have I to this, play this music behind I, me. I need this white dog collar. What is that supposed to be? Your leash for your subservience to your fucking weird beliefs? Yeah, it's there to remind you that you're never going anywhere. Yeah. What's See? up with the lowercase T? Yeah, the T necklace. What's with the T necklace, lady? <laughs> 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 Hold on. Like church. And I'm also director of the paranormal clergy. You know, I get asked fairly often, what was your first encounter with the demonic? Well, I remember laying flat on my bed. There was a top bunk of a set of bunk beds. All of a sudden, my body felt a little off kilter. And I glanced over and saw that the boy that was laying next to me was putting his finger up my anus. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably a rape story, and she just decided to call it a demon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's continue. I was still eight feet up, but I was three feet to the right of the bed. And what happened... <gasps> ah, shit. Ah. I just closed that for no reason. We'll never know Oops. what happened. Is that a sexy Jesus? Um, she she ends up saying, <laughs> yeah, you know what, I should... Jesus. Fuck, I didn't mean to stop that. I That's should play when the I got the this dyke is, haircut. This is, where I, this is why I didn't like her. Uh, Hello, my friends. I just this video I'm in my on. new book, Psychics in the Bible, 29th, to see me at the parapet. Terrifying for anyone. There we I go. saw that I was still eight feet up, but I was three feet to the right of the bed. And what happened next was extremely terrifying for anyone, especially for me, as I was only eight years old. Now, I have to be cruel and tell you you're going to have to wait for the rest of that story and come to Mineral Wells, Texas, November 27th through the 29th to see me at the Paracon there. It's great. We'll investigate the Haunted Hill House. The VFW, where we're holding the Paracon, is a former asylum. And the place is going to be fantastic with wonderful guests. (laughs) I'll be there with my new book, Psychics in the Bible with the different exorcist crosses and medals that I bring with me for people who Shut need protection. Up. I hope you'll Shut come, join us, mouth. have fun, meet new friends, and just generally up. have a great time with both the living and the dead. Who knows, I might even do a couple of medium readings. So please join me November 27th through the 29th in Mineral Wells, Texas for the Paracon. And until we meet Some then, my friends, may Almighty God unsaid. bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shut the fuck up! You hear me? Did you? Obviously, you weren't raised correctly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that was our guest for yep. tonight. She just mm. blessed us. She was lovely. Yeah, you know she does. All, well, Ugh. I'm going to tell you half my story, like and I the rest are going to have to come out to see. Like, really? The rest of the I'm world is have putting to out. be cruel. <laughs> yeah, like the rest of the world is putting out free content and, like, having people support them on the merit of their talents, and you're still doing this fucking hokey old world showman stuff yeah. here's a little tease for you kids now you're gonna have to come to texas to find out the rest yeah just to listen to me lie yeah yeah it'll never be on the internet please well, give me Wells, and god texas your money for the paracon and until we meet then my friends may almighty god bless you in the name of the father no. and of the son and of the holy spirit amen <sighs> I hate when people bless me when I don't ask for it. I'm yeah. Go take yes. a shower. It's not going to hurt you. <laughs> it's nothing. You just wash it off. <laughs> it's just an, it's just it's a, not a thing. It's just a half wit waving their hand about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Get that voodoo magic away from me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to get you. Half um, wit. And what, what kind of disappoints me is we all talked beforehand and we were going to be very nice and accepting to her about the religious stuff. Yeah. We weren't going to go after her about the religion. We weren't going to do any of that shit. But now we might as well. Yeah. We're going to see her. We're well, going to see her at Silicon, too. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Maybe we're gonna she'll see, come by dude, our booth. Right, that's fucking two people that we've torn apart on the show that we're going to have to see. And this place is only going to be, I thought about this too, this convention that we're doing, it's probably going to be one room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. We're going to be staring at each other all fucking day. We made fun of that one paranormal team for an hour and a half and tore apart, <laughs> t- 
tore apart their documentary yeah. and just made them look ridiculous. Yep. And 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 then this lady, I don't know. Whoops. I don't know why we're doing this. Maybe yeah. we just shouldn't go anymore. Maybe this is, should be our, I don't know. <laughs> we were going to get a free booth. <laughs> Becky, I talked to Becky earlier today. She was like, what the fuck is wrong with everyone? You know, because Becky's our friend from Illinois Metaphysical Paranormal Society. And mm-hmm. she's helped us out with guests multiple times. She's fucking great. Yeah. She's one of the paranormal investigators we like. We're starting to cause a rift. Or we're, 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 we're identifying our own rift, I guess. Yeah. Or we're trying to cause a rift. But yeah. We're I, we're really getting to know who we like and don't like. Um, but Becky's cool. She's like, dude, I'm gonna try to kick some ass and get get some of these people to follow through. Nice. And get them on the show because it's bullshit. They're not, you know. Everybody can. Yeah, I'll do it. And I'm like, okay, send us your number. Send us this. No, no email. Nothing. Ever. Just like fucking flakes, idiots. Flakes. All right. Well, what else we gotta get to? Anything? Um, <clears throat> that's all the big stuff. I think we should take a break if we're gonna do more stuff. Do you want to just cover the uh, paranormal news since we're since we're talking ghosts and we didn't get get our guests in tonight? Yeah, uh, we'll come back and do like quick paranormal and UFO stuff. Get out of here. Yeah, we just got a couple stories for each of those. So. All right, cool. All right, cool. All right. Back in a moment. All right, dead split egos on the overdose. Uh, yeah, we're back. Yeah. Fuck y'all. What do we got? Ghosts. Uh, doing some paranormal. Doing some UFOs. Doing some para-UFOs. All right. Yeah, there's a couple of ghost things. What is this? The shadow people of Avila, Missouri. I bet they say Avila. Um, Avila. And Avila. the legend of the death tree. What the fuck is this? Why do we have this? Uh, I don't know. I didn't notice this until right now. Oh, my God. Maybe a ghost put it in here. What the fuck? The, ooh, that's a spooky looking tree. You know what? That tree, I think, was in the movie Sleepy Hollow. <coughs> that might be a yeah. screen cap of the movie Sleepy Hollow. Yeah, it probably is. Yeah, this is just a legend. Okay, well, we don't need to fucking no, do we're this. Have to talk about Why this. is that in there? I have no idea. <coughs> okay. Um. <laughs> well, go on then. Uh, we've got a firefighter that captured a ghost on camera before battling a house fire in Indiana. Yeah, this is pretty dumb looking. I saw yeah. this. What do you think of this picture? All right, this this guy takes a picture of the burning house, then he posts it on Facebook or whatever, and his wife is like, hey, there's a ghost in that picture. Um, yeah. Uh, a lady. Pretty hard to make that claim with a house engulfed in fire, how weird the lighting and everything's licking around. Yeah, for sure. I See, I see that shadowy figure, and the first thing that I see is Freddy Krueger. Yeah. I'm looked, not getting a lady at all. No, no, no. It's not supposed to be a lady. Oh. Oh. I thought it kind of looked like a lady. Oh. Oh. Um, but see, that just shows you what different people are going to see. It's like and, a Rorschach ink lock test. Yeah, yeah and and it's it, one of those classic things where your eyes are just like trained to find <laughs> human like, figures. It's like a oh, shadow yeah. standing yeah. in the window. Yeah. It's familiar. Uh, it just looks like fire. I'm going to put this on the page for everybody. You guys can be the judge of this. Um, yeah, it looks like Dick Tracy or Freddy Krueger to me. Yeah. So who really knows? Or it's a full-blown ghost. Could ghost be a, by ghost. this point. Um, the other ghost story we have is really cool, actually. It's a... Uh, a guy captured on video, he suffered from sleep paralysis, so he was filming himself sleeping to try and figure out if there's something going on externally that could be influencing the way he feels. And uh, he captured what he believes to be a shadow person on camera. Yeah, so this guy just set up a camera while he was sleeping because he knew some fucking weird shit was going on. Right. Yeah, you're going to have to play the video. Uh, okay. Tracy's supposed to set this shit up every fucking week, dude. She does forgets some major part of what she's supposed to set up it's fucking ridiculous all right well i don't think we need the audio for this anyway thanks tracy Um, i have no no idea how i see the fucking urls on these fucking articles and she knows i don't fucking understand this (laughs) (laughs) so here it's just a shot of this guy's bed um and it's kind of subtle i'm gonna skip ahead to where they kind of adjust the contrast because i couldn't see it at first but it occurs on the wall behind him here. No, I saw it right away. It, it's like it's it's like a Bella Lugosi like fucking. Oh wow! What? Yeah, with his with his hands in front of him, like slowly rising up. <gasps> oh, can I you believe that? that? Yeah. What you don't know about can we, what? Or can we play it before the play the unenhanced version? Yeah. So what what we're seeing here is a guy laying in bed, and 
basically a shadow figure mm. appearing on the wall with like his hands outstretched in a classic horror kind of look like Ooh, I'm like kind of rising up and Ro- rising blah. up off of him like basically yeah. off of the guy now he was saying he was having like night terrors and what was going on yeah sleep paralysis sleep paralysis which has long been you know in some cultures they thought they they represented it as that fucking gargoyle that would sit on your chest or like dark spirits and shit. Yeah, Jin that would come and and fucking fuck with you while you're while you're paralyzed. And I've yeah. I've had more than one person that I've known. I've experienced sleep paralysis plenty, but I've never had this. But I've had a couple of people that I've known that said during sleep paralysis there would be like a man in the room, Blech. like a shadow man. Like, oh, yeah, that they could see. Which is, uh, that's more than one person that I've known, I'm going to say two, I keep saying more than one, but there were two people that told me that <laughs> over my life. Same basic thing. And and it's, if you look around online, you're going to find thousands of people that say that, you know? Yeah, um, absolutely. So that's fucking, that's I've, weird. I've never experienced sleep paralysis, but uh, but I understand it's really scary. And um, and it's also long stuff like that. Uh, like the space between being awake and being asleep has also long been believed <coughs> as a place where you can slip between realms. Or uh, what do you think of this video, though, David Box? What did I think of it? Yeah, it's kind of. I mean, I don't. It kind of looks fake to me. Really? Yeah, I thought so too. The ramping, uh, it kind of looks like your basic transparency. It looks like a still image with a slow move on it. And, and you guys could look this opacity up. Opacity being Sorry. key framed up and down, and that's it. You guys could look this up. Shadow figure uh, captured sleep paralysis. You'll yeah. find it. Um, I mean, so- I, I'm not saying that it is a fake, but it. <clears throat> Just the way the shadow moves and the way it fades up and down, it mm-hmm. kind of just it bears a resemblance to lazy keyframing, in uh, in something like After Effects or uh, Premiere. Yeah, it's uh, uh, and I'm trying to look at it. Does it look like it morphs at all as it's moving up, or does it yeah. look like it's a still image? It doesn't seem to even like. It does look like it morphs a little bit. It looks like it kind of bleeds up, like. Oh, yeah. like do the yeah. arms move? Like, hold on, yeah, yeah. No, it the shadow no. yeah, it's, moves. Yeah, definitely. There's like a, moves up and fades. But is it's it is weird. it bending? Is there any? Is it? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's traveling up. But is it like? No, I think changing I saw some shape. difference in ratio yeah. between yeah. like the hands and shit. Yeah. Is it bending on the corner the right way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The corner looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. If it's fake, they did a real creepy job with it (laughs) yeah it's pretty cool yeah i don't know david box i think that's a real shadow person yeah has anyone debunked it andrea no all right not yet um but you kind of got to look in the comment section of every site that it's posted on yeah somebody will probably know how somebody somewhere maybe it's it's one of those things where it's like the only thing that I have to compare com- to compare that to is real lazy keyframing that I've seen. You know, like I don't have a ghost video that I know is a ghost video that I can be like, ah, here's the telltale signs of a real ghost video. So I just, you know what I mean? I, I just searched YouTube for uh, shadow people, sleep paralysis, or shadow person, whatever, and there's a ton of different people's stories come up already. You guys can check this out. Like I said, there's thousands of people who are going to claim to have experienced this. Yeah. That's why I guess I don't go for the debunking route right away. But then again, if there's something really common. It's an easy thing to fake that you'll know people will latch onto. Right. Um, yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, if you type that into YouTube, you're going to find all kinds of fucking stories. All right. UFOs. They're back. All of the aliens are back. We're nice. not going to give you shit. What? <laughs> We're not saying shit. Come you on. have to come to Silicon and get the rest of the story. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs> uh, what is this? Some guy found a photo of a UFO encounter on his phone that he has no memory of taking. Whoa. May 25th, 2015, when the lights are out and we're finally drifting to sleep, our brains decide that they don't feel like turning off for the night. Where's this from? Why do they always have to have this big fucking setup? Like, everyone thinks they're they're going to be some great writer now. Yeah. Like you're writing for some shitty UFO site or whatever. <laughs> Why do you need two paragraphs of of your little fucking, your attempt at your little flowery bullshit writing that you need to do? Yeah. Look at all this bullshit. All right, I'm going to scroll down. Um, 
Where do they actually get to the point? All right. According to this guy, kill, Killer Fish Finger, <laughs> 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 says that according to his phone, so he must have posted anonymously on a site, uh, this yeah, photo Reddit. was taken at 10.52 p.m. the previous night. That's fine, except for the fact that he was already in bed by that point and doesn't remember getting up. Whoa. Yowza. Yeah. Uh, oh, commenters were quick to speculate, surprisingly. Wait, but this picture doesn't make sense. He's photographing another person looking at a UFO. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It looks like it, yeah. So he would have had to have met up with somebody for this UFO encounter? Uh... In an enhanced version, you can clearly see that the light objects are floating above the tree line. Someone is facing away from the camera. Killer Fishfinger says that the person in the photo is not him. According to Killer Fishfinger, the tree line that you can see in the enhanced versions of the pictures resembles the tree line on his own property. Creepy. Yeah. He's probably a liar, but pretty cool. It's pretty creepy. I'll put this one up for people, too. This is on... uh, This is the thing that sucks about UFOs. Is a lot of them are just come from like MUFON reports, and there's not a lot of verification of who anybody is. Right. You know, or this guy like posted on Reddit and stuff. Like, um. Yeah, that's kind of all you get. Yeah. So but whatever, take it or leave it. Here it is. It looks. I mean, that's a pretty UFO-y looking UFO. It's a good photo if that's what it is. It's cool. Yeah, it's definitely cool. Um, Killer Fish Finger, his UFO picture. Yeah, thank you, you very much, up. Killer Fish Finger. Uh, Polish and Parish, the mystery body, mysterious body count of ufology and the darker side of conspiracy research. Oh my. Did you look at this? No. Do you want to? <laughs> uh, it's, it's a really long, long article. See, I wish there would be some discretion about what was put in here and what wasn't that we would like yeah. talk about. Like, it's just, we set this up, you know... What? It, why? Whatever, dude. All it, right. It, well, we had one good UFO story. Yeah, I mean, this is just a really long article about yeah. how many people have been killed while researching UFOs and end up in dying in strange circumstances. Roughly 137 is the answer to that. What? That's how many people have in been in the past killed. decade. In the past. Yep. Finish the sentence. Decade. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Wow. Mysterious circumstances. So, but that's not really news to us. Heart attacks, uh, hyperaggressive I mean, cancers, with... suicides, other source of death. Almost, uh, let's see. Fuck, I just amongst ufology. Oh, amongst. Okay. Uf. Is that how you say that? Ufology. 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 <laughs> yeah. Ufology. <laughs> yeah. You don't say Uf- ufology. Ufology. Um. So whatever. Yeah. I mean. That's something to look into, but we didn't have time to really go over this. Yeah, and it's not, I mean, we know all about mysterious deaths being involved in mysterious Yeah, but we should look into it. We'll, we'll do this article in depth yeah. on Thursday. Let's look into it. We'll, I we'll, like that uh, idea. It's a good idea. We'll do it, we'll do it in depth coming up. Um, all right. Well, I think we're going to get out of here a little early tonight. Yeah. And uh, get some rest because I'm fucking sick. And sick. Yeah, I'm, I'm about done. So... Don't forget this Thursday. Andrew, my voice is going. Can you remind everybody about what's going on this Thursday? Uh, this Thursday, we're going to have Joey Tucker's sister. Yeah, her name's Melinda. I Melinda. Don't, I don't know if she's married or is named <coughs> Tucker. You know what I mean still? So I, I'll ask her. But her name is Melinda, at least, her first name. And just explain that situation for everybody who missed it. Um, her brother was killed by police six years ago uh, and... There has been an ongoing court case, and uh, oh, by the way, seeking, seeking we've, of we've seen the video. He was killed by police in a in a very in cold blood in cold yeah in, yeah. in a murderous cold blooded yes. rampage. Um, by so a she's, fucking retard swine piece of shit. Mm-hmm. She's uh she's gonna come on and talk to us about their their search for justice and their uh, per- court proceedings. <laughs> Uh, they're petitioning the new prosecutor in the area to try and convict the police officer who shot him. So she's going to share some of that information with us um, <clears throat> and give us the the whole story. So don't miss that. That's going to be really interesting. It's going to be a. Uh, it's going to be really interesting. Yeah, it's an interesting story. So All right. well, Thursday, seven p.m. Be there. Be interested. And be interested. We'll see you in a few days. This is the Idle Rich. When thou faces 
mask riding. Okay.